Live from Alta Vista High School, it's time for Colonels Basketball. The Alta Vista Colonels are on 105.5 KD Country. It's the Jeff Koch Memorial Invitational, the Christmas tournament here at Alta Vista High School. I'm Kyle Haney. With me tonight is the secret agent, the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Mr. Bob Alvis. And Bobby, it's always fun when we get to the Jeff Koch Invitational, little Christmas time hoops. You get... Uh, uh, early game to get you warmed up. Brookville just beat Central Lunenburg, and then we get the main event here. The Alta Vista Colonels getting set to take on the Brentsville Tigers. Been a while. It has been a while for me and you. It was since we've seen the Brentsville Tigers. Oh, yeah. Have we ever seen the Brentsville Tigers? Uh, I want to say back in the day, maybe in the playoffs, when Alta Vista was uh, playing uh, maybe around Orange, maybe. Very possible. But I could, maybe that's something for me to research <laughs> before tomorrow night. But right. uh, Alta Vista, obviously, is coming off a pretty good week so far. 2-0, and no complaints from that, from Troy Harris. And uh, if you're the Colonels, you want to go 3-0. and Yep, it's a four-game week for Alta Vista. This is game number three, and Bob just mentioned it. They've already got two victories. Beat William Campbell on Monday night, and then on Tuesday night, it was a 56-49 to win over Appomattox. Got a chance to catch up with Troy Harris a few moments ago about that ball game. We'll play that interview. He was pretty pleased with the way his ball club performed on Tuesday night. And he will tell us a little mini scouting report about Brentsville District High School. They are from Prince William County in Northern Virginia. They are a 3A ball club. And they've got some talent, too. They should be pretty fun to watch. Bob and I will discuss it more as the Subway pregame show rolls on. Two locations to eat fresh in Alta Vista, Main Street, and inside the Walmart on Clarion Road. Let's hear from the head coach, Troy Harris. It's high school basketball. It's the Jeff Koch Memorial Invitational. Brentsville High School in town to take on the Alta Vista Colonels. Tip off in about 19 minutes on 105.5 KD Country. To become a Moose is an awesome feeling. You just can't belong to a better organization. I was born and raised in a Moose, and I'll be a Moose the rest of my life. My son is a Moose. We're three-generation Moose Loggers. That's, that's how it is with us. I hope everybody else that can join and become a member, you need to do it. You need to see what, what, it, what it does for us. Why I belong to the Moose. For friendship, for the children, and most of all for the seniors. What are you waiting for? Stop by the Moose Family Center in Alta Vista to learn more about how you can be a moose. Car buying is simple at Fellow Chevrolet. Hi, I'm Greg Walker. You can buy online or at the store. It's quick and easy. Trade values, payment calculators, everything you need is online. We have a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on both new and used vehicles, plus a three-day money-back guarantee so you can buy with confidence. Fellers is also here after the sale. We can do warranty work on all GM vehicles, not just Chevrolet. No matter what your automotive needs, I promise we can deliver. So come see us. You'll be glad you did. Fellers Chevrolet. Is. So much more. English is. More than a hardware store. English is. English is, is your complete home center. Everything for every job you do. Always here for you. Get the quality you really need. English is. So much more. English is. More than a hardware store. English is. English is, is your complete home center. On North Main Street, Alta Vista. The game is brought to you by these members of the Katy Country Sports Club. Radio Shack and Crystal Bay Pools, serving your area since 1989 for swimming pool installations, chemicals, liners, and more. El Cerrito, throw on a sombrero, shake your maracas, it's El Cerrito time. Authentic Mexican cuisine only El Cerrito can serve up. One Stop Mart, Main Street, Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken is kicking. McDonald's of Alta Vista, proud supporter of the Alta Vista Colonels. Stop by or drive through before or after the game. The Dairy Freeze, with hot dogs, burgers, fries, and of course, ice cream. They're doing it right at the Freeze on Main Street, Alta Vista. Old Dominion Insurance, see Kim and Gil, your Erie insurance agents on Main Street, Gretna, next to Tyler Flower Shop. Thanks for sponsoring tonight's broadcast on 105.5 KD Country. Napa Auto Parts says thank you to all their customers for a great 2017. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Napa's employees, Mike, Mary, Kenny, Whitey, Richard, Johnny, Kevin, Jim, Billy, and Randy. 
Visit Napa Auto Parts in Alta Vista for the best quality auto parts at the best prices. Napa appreciates your business and looks forward to serving you in 2018. Napa Auto Parts on Main Street, Alta Vista, across from Feller Chevrolet. Thinking of starting a business or expanding your company? Think about choosing Alta Vista as your location to invest and grow. Alta Vista offers low utility cost, broadband internet, U.S. 29 access, and an attractive quality of life. Like the Colonels, it's a slam dunk when you invest in Alta Vista. Game plan with the Alta Vista Office of Economic Development at Alta Vista Town Hall. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Subway pregame show returns from night one of the Jeff Coke Memorial Invitational, the Christmas tournament here from Alta Vista High School. We're talking with the head coach of the Colonels, Mr. Troy Harris and Coach Harris. Let's talk about Tuesday night, a 56-49 win over the Appomattox Raiders. Gosh, I thought you guys played well. And uh, similar to Monday night, tie ball game at half, then you explode in the third quarter. What do you make of uh, your guys' performance there in the third quarter the past couple nights? Yeah, it's been really just making the adjustment at halftime, I think, seeing what they're doing and then, you know, really, you know, trying to tell them, hey, they're doing this, let's figure this out. And we change it at halftime. And then we do we execute in the second half. But I think it's just a testament to our guys just continuing to play hard more than anything. Um, so, yeah, making the adjustment at halftime is really the, the biggest key. I hope we can, you know, have it all figured out in the first quarter tonight so we're not tied at halftime and then have to make an adjustment. We just sort of come out and, you know, barnstorm them in the first quarter. But we'll see what happens. You shot 37 free throws Tuesday night. They shot five. Uh, now, obviously, there's more than one reason for that, but talk about that a little bit. I mean, that's got to be a number that you like because, first of all, it means you're playing pretty good defense. Second of all, it sounds to me like you guys are attacking the basket and getting fouled. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different uh, things that can attribute to that. But, um, yeah, we're attacking the basket. We're crashing the glass a little bit better than we were earlier, and we're causing those fouls to happen. And I think we held Appomattox. They, they didn't really shoot it in the lane all that much they were chucking it from deep or you know mid-range jumpers and it, we just couldn't foul them I guess because they were out there deep and you don't foul a three-pointer too often so yeah 37 to 5 I didn't know that till the next morning so yeah that's a good stat if you can keep that ratio you'll win a lot of ball games you racked a lot of them up there in the fourth quarter True. you had to be um satisfied maybe not thrilled but satisfied with the way you guys held on to the lead there late correct yeah we we started holding the ball a little bit more than I wanted to where you know they were backing us up to half court and we were sort of just trying to hang on to it had to use a few timeouts just to keep keep the ball so yeah holding it and not turning it over and making them foul us is the goal but I'd like to run our offense a little bit more while holding it if that makes sense Sure does. Tonight, let's talk about the opponent here. It's a relative unknown for you guys. Brentsville District High School. They're a 3A school from Northern Virginia. They're 2-5 and five on the season. Uh, I know they got a big man, 6'6", 6'7", right. who had a triple-double the other night. Tell us about him and what else you know about the opponent tonight. Yeah, they're from Prince William County. They're the only school in that county. Um, big guy. They're only dressing eight or nine, too, so we only have nine on the court. So it's it, it's not like they're going to have 15 guys coming in here. But, um, yeah, he's the key, the 6'6 six, six guy. He did have a triple-double. They won their last game two nights ago against Sharando. So they're coming in on a roll, you know, pretty confident. Got – good guards that can shoot it so they like to dump it into him and if he doesn't score they'll kick it out for the shooters because you have to help down on the big guy or he's just going to you know have a have the game of his life so it's sort of an inside out and they really buy into that it's not selfish guard play shooting it and he goes gets the rebound they're looking for him every time they touch the ball he gets it then he kicks it back out to them and they work that way and then defensively they're going to run a zone press and then they're going to get back into a three two and just sort of make you shoot it shoot it you're either going to beat them by shooting it or or they're going to beat you because you're going to miss a bunch of shots and the big guy gets the rebound. Interesting stuff. Yeah, they're like you guys. They're trending in the right direction. They've won two out of their last three. You guys right. have won three out of your last four. Uh, final question for you here. You know school today. There's a game before uh, the Brookville Bees taking on Central Lunenburg. Is energy level an issue? Is it something you watch out for to say, hey, guys, let's let's make sure we get it going tonight, even though the schedule is a tad bit different? Right. We got them out of bed this morning and had a shoot around this morning for about an hour. We were in here from 8 to 9 and just really told them not to go back to bed, stay awake, go do something, don't just lay around the house all day. Um, 
it will probably be a sleepy atmosphere, especially on the first night of this thing. Everybody may not be aware that it's going on. So, you know, we have to bring our own energy. The, the crowd Tuesday night wasn't the best, honestly. We really like to get everybody in the community out cheering us on. So we're sort of not used to it, but we're ready for it to be a little bit of a sleepy atmosphere. And hopefully we'll just come out from the jump with a sweat going and, uh, you know, really get going early with our energy. Good stuff, Coach. We'll let you run. It's the Tigers and Colonels set the tip off in 15 minutes on 105.5 KD Country. BCM Industrial of Alta Vista offers mobile welding and repair services, fully equipped service trucks, certified craftsmen, and quick response to satisfy your needs. Contact BCM Industrial at powerconstruction.com. BCM Industrial is a fully insured Class A licensed contractor, OSHA and MSHA compliant. PCM Industrial Services of Alta Vista wishes Coach Harris and the Alta Vista Colonels basketball team good luck in another winning season. Go Colonels! English Construction Company has been in the building business since 1909, so it's only natural that they appreciate the building process. They recognize the fact that organized sports programs build character as well as bodies and minds. They know that high school sports build our youth into more well-rounded and more productive adults. English Construction Company is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports and salute all athletes, coaches, and teachers. A word of praise and encouragement from English Construction Company with offices in Lynchburg. Whatever your truck, car, SUV needs are, High View Motors GMC has it all from small to tall. New to pre-owned, offering more than just GMC sales. High View Motors GMC provides 24-hour towing, full-service body shop, state inspection, transmissions, everything in between. High View Motors GMC, providing top quality service since 1961. From small to tall, we got it all. High View Motors GMC. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Subway pregame show is back from Alta Vista High School. The pep band making their season debut tonight. No cheerleaders tonight, but we've got the pep band there. Mighty loud. Bob and I were discussing if the volume, if the decibels have gone up. Maybe maybe that's a sign that we're getting old, that our ears are sensitive, Bob. Uh, Let's discuss Alta Vista's ball game Tuesday night a bit more against Appomattox. It was another tie game at halftime. And then just like Monday night when you saw the Colonels beat William Campbell, they sprung to life really in the third quarter. Had an explosion. It was a 19-9 quarter for the Alta Vista Colonels. And then they sort of held on to the lead there in the fourth quarter. Uh, ended up being a 56-49 to Alta Vista victory. Lance Bain led them with 22 points. Lawrence Galliard had 16. Colonels shot 37 free throws. And you heard me talk to Coach Harris about that. You and I are always talking about numbers. I think any coach would love to get to the line 37 times in a high school game. You're not going to make all of them, but you're not going to miss all of them either. That's a great way to score points. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. I mean, if you can get I don't know what you... I don't know if you have a number as a coach that you want to get from the free throw line, but you know, if you get 18 out of 37, I mean, that's still a little under 50 percent yeah but that's 18 points so the other yeah. team's got to get either six threes or nine two great way to look at it yeah total that so i think alta vista is really coming to life here when i would say it is starting to matter a bit more all the games matter especially when you're talking about your region seating because they use the season-long points that you add up by beating different teams but i think the colonels are getting it going here they're three out of their last four games they've gotten victories um i think the first couple weeks some fans were maybe a bit concerned but the competition has changed a bit now the competition tonight brentsville district they come in at two and five bob but that might be a little bit misleading they're playing a lot of four a's even some five a's in that schedule and like the colonels they're coming to life recently too they've won two out of their last three very much an unknown. Yeah. I mean, you can you can scout your opponents, but I mean, this is where Coach Harris has to have friends in uh, in high places because Prince William County up in the northern part of the state. So you really got to get some uh, people that you can count on because that's not a drivable trip to get to get the uh, eye watch. But you know, with technology now, you don't necessarily need that all the time. But I will bet most coaches would rather say, "I'd like to get my two eyes on them in person." Over the film. I think, yeah, seeing it in person is always better than the film. Film's better than nothing, though, obviously. And if you even just pick up some newspaper clippings, you can tell a little bit. We'll tell you about this 
Brentsville Tiger Ball Club in just a bit. They've got a big man on the inside, Max Barrett, who is 6'7", and he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. He's a good player. We're less than 10 minutes away from the tip-off between Alta Vista and Brentsville. You've got yourself a ringside seat coming up on 105.5 KD Country. Are you prepared for the cold weather? D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling is, and they can get your home winter ready, too. Call 841-1580 to get in touch with Donnie and his trained professional staff. 434-841-1580. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling can handle any HVAC issue in your home or business. And they get it done quickly and properly. Merry Christmas from D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling. 841-1580. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving family since 1905. Personal, memorable, memorial moments. Celebrating life and more. Prearrangements with confidence. Trust and care from our family to yours. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving family since 1905. For more than 103 years, we've offered special banking assistance to many nonprofit organizations. I'm Kathy Morgan with First National Bank, and we have a checking account just for nonprofits and faith based organizations that has no minimum balance requirement and no monthly maintenance fee. We also specialize in offering financing when your group needs a loan. So come see us at First National Bank, and we'll provide your organization with an extraordinary customer experience. First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Your station for high school sports play-by-play is 105.5 KD Country. Subway pregame show is back. Hey, Bob, enough basketball. Let's talk food. Let's talk about Subway. I went with the tuna on flatbread today. I've been telling you that our executive producer, Elizabeth Haney, always recommends the tuna on flatbread. And I can now recommend it, too. It was wonderful. And it's a, it's pretty nutritious, too, that tuna. You're a runner. That's when you, you lose me. <laughs> I know. But you're a runner. You're an athlete now. You've got to get your protein in there, right? Don't you? Just you? Insulted, you just insulted all people that run <laughs> and that are athletes. I've, I've taken a break a little bit. I okay. need to get back in it. But Subway is definitely the place you want to go yes. if you're going to get into anything What was your – what you have? I had the uh, very healthy chicken, bacon, and ranch with extra ranch, yeah. of course, on, uh, on wheat, though. I made, I made, oh, I made a sensible choice with the bread. But Small steps. Really, the only bad choice is not going to Subway. And, hey, Christmas. It's yeah. around the corner. You, we're running out of time, guys yeah. and gals. So well, get that loved one a Subway gift card. Stick in the old stocking. You may not need to put anything else in there, honestly. No, Just I think say, they're going to be. Yeah, I think they're going to be very happy with that. And it is pretty convenient just to pop into that Main Street location or the Walmart location there just off Route 29 and run in and get a couple Subway gift cards and then run out. That won't be a problem for you. The Brentsville Tigers might be a problem for the Alta Vista Colonels tonight. Don't let the record fool you. They're 2-5. and five. Max Barrett is a 6'7 senior post player for them. A triple-double a week ago against Sharondo. No, pardon me, it was earlier this week. He was on Tuesday in a 63-56 victory over Sharando. Triple-double, 11 blocks, 14 points, 11 rebounds. Brad Harner is a senior guard. He had 23 points in that game, Bob. So it's not just a one-man show with the big man Barrett inside, but you heard Coach Harris mentioning that the offense kind of runs through him. They try and get it to him first. Then when you collapse, he sends it back out. He said he's, he said he's a very good passer, and Coach Harris said it would not shock him to see him possibly throw up like a, a quadruple double later in the season with 10 assists in there right. somewhere. He's that kind of a player. He's out there warming up right now. I mean, he doesn't blow you away with his athleticism, but he moves well enough for a big man that I can I can see how he's going to be a force tonight. Good news for the Colonels is they have a very strong man in the post, too. His name is Lawrence Galliard, uh, the dragon, as you like to call him. So yeah. uh, definitely that's a place to where if you're going to have a strong guy, that's the good place. No doubt about it, and I think that's going to be a fun battle to watch in there. Maybe Galliard a bit smaller at 6'2", but more agile, maybe the better leaper. Maybe that equalizes some of the height advantage that the big man Max Barrett will have, or perhaps we'll see the Colonels drop into a zone defense at some point tonight. They've been willing to do that the past few years, so you just never know. Some other names to watch out for for the Tigers from Brentsville District High School. Drew Perper is a senior guard. They have another senior on the ball club, Drew Mychek. He is a 6'3 senior that 
I'm sure we'll call his name some. Another senior is Walter Siegel, a 6'2 senior. So they've got some experience, Bob. They've got more seniors than the Alta Vista Colonels do. Not that that is always what matters, but certainly could play a role tonight. Worked well for Rustburg in the opener. Oh, gosh, it did, yeah. That's a great ball club over there that the Red Devils have. It's the Subway pregame show. We're getting ready to get started here for the national anthems and the starting lineup and the laser light shows and all that good stuff. A lot stuff. to do. It well, is a me, lot to let do. Let me talk while you're uh, fidgeting around there. Uh, the Subway pregame show, the only bad choice not to go in. If you're a breakfast fan, they got you hooked up. Oh, yeah. If you're a lunch fan, dinner fan, obviously, everybody pretty much is, they've got you hooked up. If you're the breakfast for dinner fan, they've also got you taken care of. You so and I have done that before. We have. We have. Nothing wrong with a little egg white that's healthy bacon, too. Yeah, bacon, uh, bacon and egg, or ham and egg, or whatever you want to go with. Yeah, let me uh, tell you about some of the folks that make our broadcast possible, Bobby. While we have just a moment here, the First National Bank bringing you more bacon in 2017 and again in 2018. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, family serving family since 1905. English Construction, wishing our high school athletes an exciting and injury-free game. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development, we invite you to come find one of a kind. Tyree Littles, heating and cooling, keeping you cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and comfortable in between on this first day of winter. The Moose Family Center in Alta Vista, they're on Lynch Mill Road. Swing on by and learn how you can be a moose. Feller Chevrolet, a 100 thousand mile 10 year powertrain warranty available now at Fellers Napa Auto Parts of Alta Vista find your Napa know-how on Main Street PCM Industrial Services now with mobile welding and repair service English is your complete home center North Main Street in Alta Vista the holiday gift giving options aplenty at English's the L. Bryant heating and cooling call Donnie at 841-1580 that's 841-1580 and Highview Motors GMC from small to tall Highview does have it all. As Bob mentioned, it's the Subway pregame show. Last minute gift ideas there in the form of a Subway gift card. Buy, buy four or five of them, Bob. Put five or ten bucks each on there and then spread the wealth around. Make a lot of people happy. Like don't, don't just get one person a $50 gift card. Although if you wanted to do that for me, you could. Right. Sharing is caring. Share. You've said that before. I love that about you. Public address man and all-around good guy Robert Duff is going through his pregame announcements, and I believe the pep band is going to lead us through the national anthem right now. We'll step aside, and basketball will be on the way when we come back. It's Alta Vista High School and Brentsville District High School. We're tipping off in about 90 seconds on 105.5 KD Country. It's cold in here. Will your heating system keep you warm this winter, or will you spend a cold evening shivering under the covers. Have your heating system inspected today by Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. Kent Tyree has over 20 years experience and specializes in heating, air, plumbing, and electrical. Licensed and bonded. Call for an appointment today. 309-2266. 309-2266. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. To become a moose is an awesome feeling. You just can't belong to a better organization. I was born and raised in a moose, and I'll be a moose the rest of my life. My son is a moose. We're three-generation moose loggers. That's, that's how it is with us. I hope everybody else that can join and become a member, you need to do it. You need to see what, what, it, what it does for us. Why I belong to the moose. For friendship, for the children, and most of all, for the seniors. What are you waiting for? Stop by the Moose Family Center in Alta Vista to learn more about how you can be a moose. Car buying is simple at Fellow Chevrolet. Hi, I'm Greg Walker. You can buy online or at the store. It's quick and easy. Trade values, payment calculators, everything you need is online. We have a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on both new and used vehicles, plus a three-day money-back guarantee so you can buy with confidence. Fellers is also here after the sale. We can do warranty work on all GM vehicles, not just Chevrolet. No matter what your automotive needs, I promise we can deliver. So come see us. You'll be glad you did. Fellers Chevrolet. English is so much more. English is more than a hardware store. English is English is is your complete home center. Everything for every job you do. Always here for you. Get the quality you really need. English is so much more. English is more than.
than a hardware store. Delicious. English's is your complete home center. On North Main Street, Alta Vista. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. Well, you've made it back for the final segment of the Subway pregame show. The lights go out here at Alta Vista High School, all part of the pregame festivities, the laser light show here, and the crowd gets pumped up. The music is loud. It's a fun atmosphere. Bob, say hello to all our fans of Brentsville that might be tuning in. We sent out the word that they could listen live on 105.5 uh, with the KD Country app or at kdcountry.com, and hopefully we get some of them tuned in up there from Northern Virginia. Do you want me to tell you who they're starting while I'd we're at it? I'd love to hear who Brentsville's starting. They're going to start what? number 10, Drew Michak. He's a six foot three senior. Number twenty two, Brad Horner, six foot two senior. Number twenty three, Josiah Hogan, a six foot two junior. Tyler Dindall, he is a five eleven junior. And Max Barrett, the six foot seven senior. Sounded like two juniors in that lineup and three seniors. The Alta Vista Colonels are going to go with number four, senior Shaheen Pinnell. Number two, a junior. Lance Bain, number five, sophomore, Ronchez Graves, number 12, another sophomore, Bailey Stennett, and number 24, a junior, Trayvon Jones. Sounded like to me, Bob, that was one senior, two juniors, and two sophomores in the lineup tonight for Alta Vista, and a good mix of young and old there. Yeah, I don't think we talk about it how much the Colonels are really a young team to be honest with you this year, so it's really some growing pains maybe for Coach Troy Harris's squad. And Alta Vista is going to be dressed in their home white tonight. Alta Vista written in orange on the front. Numeral is beneath in black, centered and outlined in orange. It's almost like Brentsville has got the uh, Alta Vista alternate road jerseys. The, the yeah. black ones. They have Tigers written on the front in orange, outlined in white. Numeral is centered beneath in white, outlined in orange. And on the back, it's a center of the number outlined in orange. Numeral is in white. I love it when, when both teams have the black and orange motif. It's a, it's a good look, the black and orange combo. Let's see. Honeaker had the right. black and orange. We saw them a couple times. I believe Chill Howie wears the right. black and orange. Who, who else can you think of around the stand? No, I'm putting you on the spot, obviously. But um, well, Heritage has the orange, but they don't yeah, have the black don't to have go the with. Black. It, um, exactly. Hmm. I have to get back to you. I know. know. I, I know. I love stump, it when you do that to me. Stump the bob. The lights. Uh, that's not as hard as it used to be. The lights are on their way back on here as the teams are at jump circle set and ready to go. It'll be Barrett jumping for Brentsville. It'll be Trayvon Jones jumping for the Alta Vista Colonels. It's a decent crowd in here tonight, Bob. Maybe 50% full. It's more than we had on Tuesday. I thought we'd have more people Tuesday than we did Monday, but you actually saw a pretty decent crowd Monday when you were doing the game with me. It's Brentsville basketball. They win the tip, scoring on the basket to Bob and I's left. Here comes a three-pointer from Brad Harner on the way. Clanged off the iron, no good. Rebounded in the middle by the high-leaping Josiah Hogan. Back in the hands of Harner, left wing. Pinnell gets in front of him, cuts off his drive to the basket. Harner retreats back out beyond the three-point ring. He has it on the right wing now. He's moving and really asking for the basketball a lot. Goes downstairs to the big man Barrett, but he lost the handle out of bounds. Alta Vista will get to touch it for the first time with 7.28 left to play. And the English is your complete home center first quarter. Barrett's not a twig either. He's got some upper body strength with him as well. Pressed by Brentsville. Jones fell down looking for somewhere to go, but he couldn't get it away. Drew Michak took it off his hands, and then a steal by Ronchez Graves on the other side gets the basketball back for the Alta Vista Colonels. Pinnell angles to center. Now it looks like Brentsville has fallen back in a 3-2 zone. You don't see the 3-2 very often. You see the 2-3 all the time. That's cookie cutter, but the 3-2 zone, that's interesting. Here's Lance Bain. Nice quick first step to the hole. Went high off the backboard, but the shot didn't fall. Another rebound from Josiah Hogan, and Brentsville is going the other way. It'll be Dindal to walk it across the timeline. Just over a minute in, and no score. Colonels defending the basket to our left. Here's Michek with the basketball back over to Dindal. Good movement. Nobody down low. Now Barrett's going to go post up. He had the basketball in his hands for a moment. Here's a drive and a nice jump stop floater put up from Harner, but it's no good. Barrett has the rebound. His second chance won't go. The third try will. Max Barrett cracks the scoring column and gives... 
Brentsville their first lead of the evening, two to nothing. I think Brentsville had four chances offensively on that possession. Yeah, Colonels, that's a no-no. Yeah, I was going to say, Colonels are going to want to avoid that, especially with a 6'7 guy. I mean, you know he's going to get some extra chances just because of the height, but got to get a body into him and try and move him as far away from the glass as possible. Colonel basketball, scoring on the bucket to our right, working against this 3-2 to two unconventional zone. Reverse, no good. That was Trey Jones. It was a nice move. When they're trying to trap out of that 3-2 as well, if you notice when they get it to a guard in the corner, the guy in the middle will come over and they'll try to trap. Pinnell guarding the basketball. Floater up from Harner, no good. Ball's out of bounds. It'll be Brentsville basketball. They'll inbound underneath their own scoring bucket with 5.37 remaining in the first quarter. Brentsville already with a 2-0 lead. Inbound play, they get a man free underneath, and that shot won't go. Brentsville not shooting the ball well tonight, Bob, and they've had some decent looks. It's rebounded by Lance Bain for the Colonels. I would say they've had good looks, better than decent. I would be about that. seven and in. Nice little pocket pass from Ronchez Graves to find a moving Trey Jones, and then he floats one to the rim. It's good. We're tied two to two. Just over five minutes to play in this opening frame here from Alta Vista High School. We appreciate you tuning in on a Thursday night. There's another close proximity shot that will not fall. Tyler Dindall used the left hand but just could not score. Here's Graves in and out of traffic. Pulls up from 14 feet. Book it. Nice soft jumper from Ronchez Graves. He really went line to line there. Well, stopped at the free throw line but knocked it down nicely. Colonel's first lead of the night. Just over three minutes into the game and the Colonel's do lead by a bucket. Barrett on the low post trying to get free. Basketball stuck on the far sideline. Five-second count there. Ronchez Graves was able to harass number 22, Brad Harner, and Harner just never got rid of the ball. The five-second count came out. That's a turnover. Colonels have it on the far sideline. Carter Duff, the birthday boy, checks in for the Colonels. That's right. The freshman. I guess Bab probably turned 15, you think, maybe? I don't know if freshman? I give people's ages. Oh, anymore. Yeah. You never know. Some people can get... That's no. true. You're, I mean, but again, just another young guy on this Colonel's team yeah. who is, uh, you know, learning how to swim by getting thrown in the deep end. That's right. Playing a lot of minutes. First substitute in here. There's a takeaway by Brentsville. Up ahead, it goes to Dindall. Has to split a double team from Graves and Stennett, and he does so and scores. We're tied 4-4 four to four now with just over 4.05 left to play in the first quarter. So... We've played four minutes of basketball. It's been a slow scoring pace. Each team has had some opportunities that they have been unable to convert. Bailey Stinnett, deep right wing, flips over to Carter Duff, and there's a foul. It's our first foul of the ball game, Bob. Comes with 3.52 left in the first quarter. We're tied 4-4. Four to four. Don't Didn't you think you normally see a foul before then? You would think so. Foul's on me, check. His first substitution in his game for Brent Phillips, Nate Kettner, number 12. Brentsville doesn't have a ton of size other than Max Barrett. I say that. Josiah Hogan, 6'2". Drew Michak, 6'3". So I might have to take back what I just said. I mean, three ball on the way from Bailey Stennett. In and out, no good from the left corner. Knocked out of bounds. Colonels can't save it. It's Brentsville basketball. 3.34 left to play in the first. We're tied 4-4. Four to four. Brookville picked up a win in, against Central Lunenburg in the first game. They'll play Brentsville tomorrow night. Brentsville versus Brookville. Now, that's an interesting uh, name conundrum there for a would-be broadcaster. A traveling violation on the Tigers is going to give the basketball over to the Colonels. Scott Jester in the crowd checking it out. Carter Duff flips it up ahead to Lance Bain. He has it far left sideline. One-handed overhead pass over to Ronchez Graves. Graves will work off a screen. Needs somewhere to go. Finds Bailey Stinnett. Three-pointer on the way. It's no good. Barely drew iron, and it's out of bounds. It'll go back to Brentsville again. We're tied 4-4. 3-12 left to play in the first quarter. Tyler Boyd is set to check in for the Alta Vista Colonels. Bob, I don't think you've seen have not Boyd yet. He's a young player. He's a sophomore, 6 foot. Not a bad ball player. This is Brad Harner working around the screen from the big man Barrett. Then he gives it up. It's left wing to Michak. 15-footer on the way and good from Harner from the left elbow. Lead is back to Brentsville District High School, 6-4. to four. Boyd will check in. Shaheen Pinnell also. You think the slow pace because the teams don't know each other and they're feeling each other out a bit more? Maybe that doesn't have anything to do with it? 
I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's like that boxer trying to establish a little bit of a jab early. Uh, you know, like we said, everybody has film nowadays with the uh, invention of a lot of electronics. But still, I think it's you, you got to get used to your opponent. Yeah. This 3-2 to two zone is a little different for the Colonels as well. And I would argue that Brentsville maybe hasn't played a tenacious man-to-man like Alta Vista plays on defense. Turnover. There is a turnover. Brentsville going the other way. A block. Michek got it off his right hand, but it was altered. And then the follow-up from Nate Kettner is good. Brentsville extends their lead 8-4, to four, doubling up the Colonels. We've got 2 minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Pinnell Correct. bullets a pass to Lance Bain. He'll fire for 3. It's off the mark. No good. Colonels chase down the rebound. Go ahead. Got to get on the boards, though, on the other side, too. Defensively, they're just giving Brentsville way too many shots in the possession. Yeah, the Tigers have had some pretty good looks. Here's Boyd to the hoop from the right side. It was altered by a quickly closing Max Barrett. Brentsville going the other way again. They'll tap the brakes for a moment. This is Brad Harner. Harner gets by Pinnell, skies to the front of the iron and scores. Athletic move there from Harner was a bit deceptive. He was in second gear most of the time. Then when he exploded, really blew by Pinnell. It's a 10-4 Brentsville District High School lead. 142 left to play in the first quarter. Harner with the foul. That's his first, team second. Another bucket for Brentsville, and I think Coach Harris might use a timeout. We've got 92 seconds left in the first quarter. Shaheen Pinnell's three-point shot. shot is off the mark. That was a little quick, yeah. Colonels didn't really get into the offensive flow. Pump fake from Michek. He'll pull the trigger from 14 feet. It's no good. Scramble for the loose ball on the far left baseline. Goes off of Brentsville, out to Vista Ball with 120 left in the first. Well, you brought it up in the interview. I mean, people are out of, out of sorts today with it's not a routine day. You didn't go to school. You didn't have that full day of school. Then hanging around, that's going to be a foul on Barrett, I believe. Yeah, big-time collision there at the left elbow free throw line as Bain got going full speed. Barrett, I don't know if he was trying to take the charge or get out of the way, but he didn't either. It's a foul on him. It's the third on Brentsville District High School. Duff fires an overhead pass to the top of the key, finds Bain. Lance Bain pulls up, 15-footer, bang, got that one. You can see Bain still trying to shake off the collision there with Barrett. Gives the Colonels some much-needed points. They hadn't scored in a while. They trail 10-6, 62 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Here's Barrett, right elbow, nice up and under move, went to the front of the rim. He was fouled in the act of shooting. The shot was no good. First time we've seen anybody shoot free throws tonight, Bob. It will happen with 57.6 seconds left in the first. Fouls against Duff. His first. Team foul number one. It's been a clean game, obviously. Brentsville has three fouls. Alta Vista, one. Barrett's first one is in. Gives the Tigers an 11-6 lead. It's part of the Jeff Koch Memorial Invitational. We used to call it the Christmas Tournament, but when Mr. Koch passed away a few years ago, they renamed it in his honor. He was a longtime scorekeeper for Alta Vista, also a softball umpire. He did a lot of things involving sports. If right. there was an activity going, he had a hand in it somehow. He's a great guy, a lot of fun to be around, and we do miss him indeed. And you can't really call it a tournament because it's not like the winners play each other. As you mentioned, the matchup is set. Brookville will play Brentsville tomorrow. Alta Vista will take on Central Lunenburg. While bad. we're discussing, there's a foul over on the far baseline. Bad news, too, if you're a Brentsville fan because that's on Barrett. Mm. That's his second. Yep. You yeah. got to at least get him out for the last 25. Yeah. He's going to come out seconds, right now. Excuse me. Lance Bain open in the right corner. Did not pull the three-pointer. Derek Stevens is in the ball game for the Alta Vista Colonels. It's Stevens, Duff, Pinnell, Boyd, and Bain. Boyd has it, free throw line. Needs somewhere to go. He's double teamed, harassed. Used a dribble to get free. Nice move. Hops it over to Lance Bain. Bain skying to the rim. Fouled. Shot didn't really get out of his hands, but Lance Bain going to go to the free throw line, a place where he is very accustomed to being. If you joined us late, the Colonels were at the free throw line a lot as a team Tuesday night. 37 in all. They made 22 of them. Bain's first one is up and good. By joining us late, do you mean if you didn't join us Tuesday night, you missed that? Well, I mentioned it in the pregame show. I asked Coach Harris about the free throw situation. I think the crazy thing was the fact that the Colonels shot so many and Appomattox only shot five on Tuesday night. Big-time disparity there, but that has a lot to do with the Colonels attacking the basket and Appomattox settling for long-range shots. Bain connects on both. 
The lead is now 11-8. Brent's feeling in trouble. Some high-pressure defense. Here's Stevens. Got really into the jersey of number 10, Drew Michak, and that's a foul. First one on Stevens, second one on Alta Vista as a team. Down to 6.4 seconds left. Brentsville will inbound, far baseline right. They find a curling Harner. Harner gets by a double team, in trouble, throws it down low to Josiah Hogan. Lay-in won't go. Clock down to one, now zero, and that shot will not count. It got off the hand of Michek. It was no good anyway. We've played one quarter here from Alta Vista. It's an 11-8 Brentsville lead. Second quarter on the way when we return on 105.5 KD Country. Napa Auto Parts says thank you to all their customers for a great 2017. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Napa's employees, Mike, Mary, Kenny, Whitey, Richard, Johnny, Kevin, Jim, Billy, and Randy. Visit Napa Auto Parts in Alta Vista for the best quality auto parts at the best prices. Napa appreciates your business and looks forward to serving you in 2018. Napa Auto Parts on Main Street, Alta Vista, across from Feller Chevrolet. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. It's Brentsville 11, Alta Vista 8. I'm Kyle. He's Bob. We've got a whole bunch of sound engineers back at the station sounding or ma- trying to make us sound good, trying to make us sound good. It's not easy. And we know we've got folks listening all over the Commonwealth, Central Virginia, up in I love Brentsville, yeah. Brentsville High School is in Noakesville, Virginia, which is kind of interesting. I'm going to get say. you an answer tomorrow because I think Alta Vista played them once. You think Alta Vista really played do. Brentsville back in the day? We do. We need to research that. Colonel's basketball, front court right. Bob and I will give our thoughts here in the first quarter, and next time we have a, a moment to discuss at length. It was an interesting first quarter. Here's Lawrence, Lawrence Galliard. Galliard in the ball game. Yep, and his shot is no good. Interesting how they immediately got Lawrence Galliard the ball. Galliard is a senior for the Colonels. He is second leading scorer on the ball club right now at 11 points per game. He's going to the free throw line to shoot two. It was the second foul on Drew Michek. Sixth foul on Brentsville as a team. So next one, Alta Vista shooting the rest of the way. Unless it's an offensive player control. Only 16 seconds in here. In quarter two, Colonel's down by three, and they'll stay there as Galliard misses both. Brentsville going to hustle it into the front court left. That's me, check. Now it's in the corner. Three-pointer on the way, and good from the junior, Nate Kettner. Knocked it down from the right corner. That extends the Tiger lead, 14-8. to eight. Colonel's in a hurry. Now they'll slow things down just a bit. Bailey Stinn at right wing. Top of the key now to Ronchez Graves. Lance Bain, quick trigger, catch and shoot, three-pointer, left wing, no good. Galliard has the rebound, up strong with it, off the rim, no good on that one as well. Lawrence is going back to the free throw line where he just spent a couple moments. He'll try and make these. It's the third one on Drew Michek. Bob, first quarter, uh, as you and I mentioned, a little slow, not a lot of rhythm, not a lot of feel to it. Uh, Slow scoring, I guess we should say. I think the Colonels... It kind of looks like they weren't in school today. You know what I mean? They're moving a little slow. You would think maybe a team like Brentsville that had to travel, they would be the ones that would be dragging a little bit, but not the case right now anyway. 14-9 has number three for Brentsville. We'll check in. I wish I knew who that was. (laughs) We don't have a three on our roster. Let's, Let's find out. Let's do some research. There's no number two down there right now. Maybe that's number two, Carson Pell. Judging by the size, Carson Pell is listed as a freshman at 5'7". I think that might be him. Right. We'll see if we can find out from the wonderful event coordinator, Robert Duff, or perhaps the Alta Vista scorekeeper, Kelsey Green. There's a layup good from point blank range from Brad Harner. You know who he is because he's scored quite a bit. The senior has two more. Brentsville now leading 16-9. to Colonels will... Hustle into the front court right, scoring on the basket to Bob and I's right. We're up here in the press box tonight at Alta Vista High School. You hate to say it's getting out of hand, but, I mean, if you're Alta Vista, you don't want this lead getting close to double digits. I couldn't agree more. Graves went to the basket, had the shot blocked. I believe it was Josiah Hogan that did the honors, but there were a couple Tiger defenders in the area. Really no need to put Barrett back in right now either. No, not right now. I I wouldn't risk it. There's a rebound by Lawrence Galliard on the missed floater from Brad Harner. 
Graves brings it down Main Street, now stops at the top of the key. Over to the right wing, finding Bailey Stinnett. He flips back to Graves. Graves, one dribble, tosses to Trey Jones. Jones, long two-pointer, no good from the right baseline. It's knocked out of bounds by Lance Bain, who popped it off of the guy that we think is Carson Pell. Brentsville's doing a good job of defending on the perimeter, too. Agreed, Alta yeah. Vista's having a tough time getting looks out there. They're down seven as we head to the six-minute mark of the English's second quarter. I think that's one of the benefits to that 3-2 zone. You get yeah. some guys out on the perimeter a bit more than the 2-3. Here's Pell with the right-handed floater up from 10 feet. No good. Came down the left alleyway there. Had a nice open look, but it clanged off the iron. Still don't know that they're, they're taking a lot of good shots, though. Brentsville, that right. is? Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, they're, they're making some shots, obviously. <laughs> Brentsville has 16 points to the Alta Vista 9. Bless you, Bob. Thank you. Tis the season. Yeah. It's also cold and flu season, so I should probably eject you from the press box if you do that again. I can't get sick. Cal, your jump stop, right area of the paint. Now it's off to Bailey Stinnett. Pinnell, catch and shoot three, rattles that one home. Maybe that'll give the Colonels the spark they needed. Shaheen Pinnell, the senior, connecting from the left wing. Now it's 16 to 12. Brentsville leading by four. You can see the defensive intensity from the Alta Vista Colonels. Maybe too intense there as Bailey Stinnett will get whistled with a hand check foul. Got his right hand on the body and jersey of Carson Pell. Going to confirm that that is Carson Pell because he's wearing number three. We have Carson Pell listed as number two. And just for the record, there's no number four on the bench either. There's a number four on the roster. So You're right. Number four is... Also listed at 5'8", so that <laughs> we're going to find out. Don't worry. We've got our crack team of investigators on the case, which means Bob and I will look during halftime at the scorebook. Here's Hart driving again. Galliard gets a piece of that with the right hand and sends it off the back wall near former Alta Vista assistant coach Jerry Rice. Rice had to just subtly move his head and dodge the oncoming basketball. Brentsville will inbound. With 5.16 left to play in the second quarter, leading 16-4. to four. Nice inbound play to spring Nate Kettner free, and he's fouled as he goes up for two from the left side of the paint. Shot won't go down. Kettner's going to shoot two. It's Alta Vista's fourth as a team. It's the first on Trayvon Jones. Free throw is no good. There will be another one coming for Nate Kettner. See, that's why you're not sneezing. You're doing the hot tea bit. I've tried to get you in on this I know. scene, man. I know. It's a great thing. Kettner, second one on the way. That's back iron, no good. Good athletic rebound by Lance Bain to Sky and take it out of the air at the left edge of the painted area. Colonel's got to figure out a way to get a good shot, preferably an easy shot. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, Pinnell hit that three on the last possession, but you can't live and die by the three. You can, but it's not going to work in the long run, I don't think. Galliard up and under, reverse lay in, falls. Came in from the left side of the iron, then went underneath the hoop. Head hit the netting, stuck it up with the right hand. There's a timeout on the court for Brentsville. Their head coach, Al Ford, takes the timeout. We'll take it, too. They lead by two, 16 to 14. Four minutes and 53 seconds left to play in the half on 105.5 KD Country. Thinking of starting a business or expanding your company? Think about choosing Alta Vista as your location to invest and grow. Alta Vista offers low utility cost, broadband internet, U.S. 29 access, and an attractive quality of life. Like the Colonels, it's a slam dunk when you invest in Alta Vista. Game plan with the Alta Vista Office of Economic Development at Alta Vista Town Hall. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Thursday night basketball between the Brentsville Tigers and the Alta Vista Colonels. Brentsville sporting a two-point lead now, 16-14. to Bob, we had a lead change and a tie earlier, but... For most of the first quarter, it was a Brentsville lead, and for all of this second quarter, it's been a Brentsville lead. Colonel's trying to change that. Maybe they can get a stop here. They've got a turnover. Yep. It was a long lead pass from Pell. It was just way too far beyond the outstretched arms of Brad Harner. Colonel's can tie or lead. Or take the lead. <laughs> Shaheem Pinnell got the last basket from the field for the Alta Vista Colonels. His pass was nearly intercepted, telegraphed it a bit, but the Colonel's bailed out and they'll inbound near sideline right. Carter Duff, Shaheem Pinnell, Lance Bain, Trayvon Jones and Lawrence Galliard, the five on the floor right now for the home team dressed 
in the white with the orange and black trim. Bunnell, another three-pointer on the way. It had the distance. It had the accuracy, but it was a bit long. There's an offensive rebound by Josiah Hogan. He's fouled almost immediately as he catches the ball. I believe it's on number 24, Trey Jones. Yes, it is. It's his second foul. Bailey Stinnett, Ronchez Graves check back in. Shaheen Pinnell and Trey Jones check out. I don't know if the Colonels look tired or not, but it doesn't seem that they have the same spark that they did on Monday and Tuesday. Maybe it's the fact that this is their third game in a week. Maybe it's finally catching up with them. I don't know. Well, and it's easier to get up for Appomattox and William Campbell when you see those teams as opposed sure. to somebody you don't see frequently. Yeah, you've got a bit of a rivalry there. Pell going to fire from three-point land, and it's good. Carson Pell, we think, knocking down a three-pointer to give Brentsville some breathing room. They up their lead back to 5, 19-14. We're midway through this second quarter. It's presented by English's, your complete home center, North Main Street in Alta Vista. Here's Galliard, mid-post right, sends it back out with a high pass to Bailey Stinnett. They swing it around the horn. They find Lance Bain on the left side, three-pointer, off the mark, bounces over the backboard. That's a turnover, and it'll be Brentsville ball again. Now, the reason Bain got that shot off is because the Colonels just swung it around the horn very quickly. Great ball movement on that possession by the Colonels. It's been confirmed. Number three is Carson Pell. And I always Carson told you Pell, to believe in yourself. I do. I believe in myself. No, you didn't. It's nice to have somebody tell you they believe in you, too, or just tell you who number three is. Pell tried to bounce pass. That was off the mark. It's a turnover. So Carson Pell hit the three-pointer in the last possession, but here, bouncing the ball out of bounds. Ronchez Graves will bring it up just left of center for the Alta Vista Colonels. He jogs into the front court, takes a look at the 3-2 zone from Brentsville. They've been in that all night. Don't think I've, we've seen them change it up. Galliard, left low post, off the window and good for two. Lawrence Galliard with a nice athletic move to the basket after a good feed by Ronchez Graves. 19-16, Brentsville leading by three. Galliard nearly got a takeaway. Ball ends up in the hands of a lucky fan about four rows up, but it's not like baseball. You've got to give it back. No souvenirs here. Well, would you change up from the 3-2? I mean, I think the 3-2 has been pretty successful because I am of the opinion if I'm going to let a team beat me, I'd almost rather than beat me inside than out. I think that's a valid point. But, you know, even the best shooters are 30 or 40% from three-point land. I mean, what are the best shooters from a layup? 80%, 90%, maybe more? Got to get it into them, though. You do. You do. And I think Brentsville's done a great job. I wouldn't change it up because they're doing a good job. Just under three to go in the English this second. Brandon forced in the game now. His lay-in from the left side won't go. Josiah Hogan's second chance also no good. Colonels finally cleared away. They're working the other way quickly. Quickly, pardon me. Graves in full stride. Now he stops at the edge of the three-point line. Between the circles now, just left of center. Graves, good bounce pass feed inside to Galliard. One dribble, jump stop. Shot blocked away by a combo of Tiger defenders. Here comes Farner. In a hurry, floats it up defensive foul. Thought they might have called the charge, but it was a defensive foul on Ronchez Graves. Just could not quite get the feet set in time. He read Harner's move to the basket. Harner did a good job weaving his way in and out of traffic, and he'll go to the free throw line and shoot a pair. And really, it's going to be shooting the rest of the way for Brentsville as yep. well. That's a six foul, but it, Harner will shoot. Next foul would be one and one. Harner sinks it. Brentsville wearing the road black jerseys tonight with some orange trim. White numbers surrounded in orange. They're the Tigers. They're a 3A school from Prince William County. Come into the ballgame at 2-5. and five. Here's another timeout from head coach Al Ford for Brentsville. We'll take the timeout, too. Tigers lead 21-16 to 16 over the Colonels from Alta Vista. Two minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the half on 105.5 KD Country. PCM Industrial of Alta Vista offers mobile welding and repair services, fully equipped service trucks, certified craftsmen, and quick response to satisfy your needs. Contact PCM Industrial at powerconstruction.com. PCM Industrial is a fully insured Class A licensed contractor, OSHA and MSHA compliant. PCM Industrial Services of Alta Vista wishes Coach Harris and the Alta Vista Colonels basketball team good luck in another winning season. Go Colonels! Your station for high school sports play-by-play is 105.5 KD Country. Well, Bob and myself are having so much fun up here. We hope you're enjoying it, too. Brentsville leading 21-16 at the moment. All right, Bobby, sometimes you and I like to play coach. Maybe the timeout just to adjust the defensive pressure. It looks like Brentsville is going back to the full-court press. 
Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That, well, it's another good, good topic. Is Galliard has to go the second try. And Galliard's first one was just a tad short. He got his own rebound. Back in for two. 21-18. I mean, you see that a lot in basketball. The coach will call a timeout after his team scores a basket. And maybe it is to set up a new defense, but gosh, you only get six of them. You don't want to use them all just to change defenses. Pardon me, you get five of them. I beg your pardon. I was thinking about the NBA, I guess. Oh, Big East rules. Yeah. <laughs> Playing with six today, boys. Yeah. 21-18. Colonels trail by three, but could tie with a three on this possession. Lance Bain thought about it. Going to drive instead at left baseline. Leaves it off for Gallier. He scores. It's good. And Lawrence Galliard is fouled. Well, a chance to tie the old-fashioned way. Lawrence Galliard a chance at a three-point play here. 21-20. to Brentsville up by one. The foul was on number 33, Tyler Dindall. Pardon me. Dindall's first. Eighth on Brentsville as a team. Free throws on the way. It's no good. Rebounded by Harner. Harner's the complete package, isn't he, Bob? Moves well. Shoots. Scores inside. Rebounds. Long two-pointer from Carson Pell, no good. Got his own rebound. Got through the defense. Now it's off to Dindall for three. That's no good. Way off the mark, but rebounded by Carson Pell. Right place, right time for the young freshman. Harner's going to slow things down, hold it over his head, get some instruction from Coach Al Ford. Squirts by Lance uh, Lawrence Gallier, but Gallier recovered, and the Dragon returned it to sender with a block. Here's Graves to the right side of the iron. Shot's no good. It's blocked out of bounds. The thing that gets me about the rebounding is a lot of these guys that are rebounding some of these uh, balls for Brentsville shouldn't be rebounding them if you're looking at the conventional tall guy's rebound factor because they're just kind of, you know, having it bounce right to them or either just getting positioning. Yeah, Galliard catches the lob pass on the inbound then had it blocked away by Josiah Hogan. Brentsville going the other way, catch and shoot three-pointer from Dindall, right wing. It's no good. Lawrence Galliard with a rebound. Had to run it down near the three-point line. Colonels quickly in transition. Stinnett catches, drives, went three on one. That Took was no contact. good. It ended up in the hands of Lance Bain. Bain throws up a wild rebound or a wild shot attempt where he played through some contact. That's no good either. Al Ford looked at the official, maybe thanking him for not blowing the whistle. They're letting him play tonight a little bit. Another minute. 50 seconds, yeah. Harner driving. Oh, the skying layup is good. Brad Harner with a nice bounce to the basket. Came down the right side of the paint, split a couple defenders, and scored with the right hand, and he's fouled. Brad Harner, a senior, a 6'2", inside-outside kind of player. He had 23 points earlier this week. In a game against River, their other win against Riverside, he had 18 points. He hit five three-pointers tonight. He's not doing the damage from outside. He's getting inside and scoring. 23-20. Brentsville lead at three again. Graves looks at the defense, holds the ball over his head. Pass nearly intercepted, but Bailey Stinnett has it. Pump fakes from 15 feet right baseline. Then his pass attempt is knocked out of bounds. Every time you say Brad Harner, I think about the uh, former area golfer Brad Carner. Mm. from Jefferson Forest. Uh, a lot of uniqueness that we've talked about tonight, like Al Ford. Six letters in the whole name. I love it. Al Ford. Does he have the shortest name in, in high school coaching? 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, we're having fun. Basketball tapped into the pep band here. Alta Vista will inbound far sideline left. I'll tell you, all jokes aside, Brentsville's taking the fight right to Alta yes. Vista. The Tigers clearly have more energy tonight. That may not be the deciding factor in this ball game. But they've got a spring in their step. They're playing with a, a real passion. Down to 12 seconds. Stinnett has it left corner. Nice no-look dish to Galliard. Galliard going to force his way inside to the rim, and they call a it walk. a traveling violation. Yes. Lawrence, it was one of those power moves again. He tried to take it right into the chest of Hogan. 8.8. .8. Full court man-to-man -man pressure for gotta the Alta Vista Colonels. They had a hard time getting it in. Carter Duff knocked it out of bounds. They were trying to get it in the hands of Carson Pell. Brentsville will inbound again. That took a few ticks off. 7.2 left. Yeah. And it moves the ball on the sidelines, which is where a lot of people maybe aren't comfortable inbounding. Yeah, I don't think many people have a lot of sideline inbound plays drawn up. Maybe one. You've got millions of baseline inbound plays. Oh, it's Alta Vista basketball. I didn't think that ball was. Brentsville. I didn't think that was touched. Wow. Alta Vista ball, 6.9 left. Graves into the front court. Jump pass to Duff. He line drives a low pass to Bain. Down to one second. 
Duff, a contested three-pointer up and nearly in. It rattled around the iron, but no good. We've played one half from Alta Vista. Low-scoring affair. Brentsville leads by three, 23-20 to 20 over Alta Vista. Subway halftime show on the way when you return to 105.5 KD Country. Are you prepared for the cold weather? D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling is, and they can get your home winter ready, too. Call 841-1580 to get in touch with Donnie and his trained professional staff. 434-841-1580. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling can handle any HVAC issue in your home or business. And they get it done quickly and properly. Merry Christmas from D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling. 841-1580. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student-athletes in Virginia are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Brought to you by English Construction Company, with offices in Lynchburg. Whatever your truck, car, SUV needs are, Highview Motors GMC has it all, from small to tall. New to pre-owned, offering more than just GMC sales. Highview Motors GMC provides 24-hour towing, full-service body shop, state inspection, transmissions, everything in between. Highview Motors GMC, providing top quality service since 1961. small to tall, Motors GMC. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. The Subway halftime show has arrived, and the Brentsville Tigers arrive with a three-point advantage, 23-20 to over the Alta Vista Colonels. I'm Kyle Haney. He's Bob Alvis. A bunch of sound engineers back at home base, pumping it out across the airwaves and the Internet, hopefully making it sounding good. We appreciate you tuning in. No matter where you're listening, how you're listening, hope your holiday is going wonderful already. Merry Christmas. And uh, I'll tell you, Bob, fun, fun doing basketball games with you. It was an interesting game. As I mentioned, a bit low scoring, 23 to 20. The Tigers, coached by Al Ford, come in averaging 51 points per game. So they're really not that far off of that pace. And, you know, the Colonels are... Averaging just a hair over 51 points per game, too. So the old dog I, slusher rule. I say it's a low-scoring game, but maybe it's really not as low-scoring yeah. as I'm making it sound. The old Mark Slusher rule. First yeah. team to 50 uh, was going to be good in the basketball game, and that could come out today as well. Alta Vista, really, I'm, you know, what concerns me is the body language. They yeah. just look tired. They don't look into the flow, but still, they're in the game. They're only down by three, 23 to 20. And a lot of basketball left to be played. Plenty of basketball left. I think it's going to be interesting, the adjustments. I think Coach Harris and his guys have been doing wonderful jobs at halftime, really coming out in the third and fourth quarters and and playing well. You know, it was a tie ball game Tuesday. Colonels had a 19-9 quarter. It was a tie ball game Monday at half. Colonels had a 20-10 third quarter. So the third quarters have been where... The Alta Vista Colonels have been making their hay recently, and we'll see if they do the same thing here tonight against Brentsville. They're not tied this time, though. The Tigers are up 23-20 to over the Colonels. Subway halftime show returns in just one moment on 105.5 KD Country. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service A family serving families since 1905 Personal, memorable, memorial moments Celebrating life and more with confidence, trust and care from our family to yours. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, a family serving families since 1905. This is 100% convenient mobile banking with local First National Bank. With our First Snap mobile app, you can securely check balances, make deposits, pay bills, transfer money, and much more. It's easy to use, and we even have a video demo on our website at firstnatbk.com. And it's free, so search First Snap mobile app and download it for free today. Remember, banking from anywhere, anytime will help you bring home more bacon. First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
What if a tire stood up and said, hey, why should I have to decide if I want to be a winter tire or a performance tire or a rain tire? Maybe I want to be all of them. Presenting the Cooper CS4 Touring Tire. Outstanding all-season performance, superb wet weather traction, and up to an 80,000-mile warranty. The Cooper CS4, the official tire of changing the rules. Available at Perkins Twin Tire and Auto Service on Main Street in Alta Vista. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Perkins will reopen for regular business hours on Monday beginning at... It's cold in here. Will your heating system keep you warm this winter? Or will you spend a cold evening shivering under the covers? Have your heating system inspected today by Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. Kent Tyree has over 20 years experience and specializes in heating, air, plumbing, and electrical. Licensed and bonded. Call for an appointment today. 309-2266. 309-2266. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. Having fun on a Thursday night. I'm Bob. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you? I'm having so much fun that I'm Bob. Let me start that again. Mrs. Alvis and then Katie, you need to be aware. I've been impostered. Let me start this again. He's Bob Alvis. I am Kyle Haney, and you are whoever you are, and we appreciate you tuning in. You're the final piece of the puzzle. We couldn't do it without you. 55 years of outstanding high school sports coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Brentsville District High School leading 23-20 to over the Alta Vista Colonels. Bob is closing in on some halftime statistics, and I've been mentioning, Bob, that Brentsville is a 3A school from Northern Virginia. Maybe for the Brentsville fans, I should mention, Alta Vista is a 1A school from Central Virginia, about 30 minutes south of Lynchburg, if you're familiar with that. We assume that everybody right. listening always knows that stuff, but I guess it doesn't hurt to mention it every now and again. It's like you told that story about the Twins guy that talked about, well, have you mentioned Harmon Killebrew's right hand right. or whatever yep. it was? I guess it yep. never hurts to throw that out every now and then, does it? I don't think so, and it uh, doesn't hurt to say this is the Jeff Coke yes. Memorial Invitational. Uh, Mr. Coke, a great guy. I remember the first time I met him, it was when I started with KD Country when uh, Dave and Mark were doing the football games, and I was doing some sideline stuff and everything, and uh, he always wore shorts yeah, to the no football matter what. games. Yeah. And I remember one Friday night, I uh, wasn't wearing the shorts. I was wearing shorts. <laughs> I'm like, why are you not wearing shorts? My wife wouldn't let me. So I don't <laughs> and then that that became the joke. If if I was wearing if I wasn't wearing shorts, my wife wouldn't let me. Right. If he wasn't wearing shorts, my wife wouldn't let me. So, but a uh, great guy. I'm, you know, I remember Mike Carlero always said he could just crack him up right at the right times before the game. And Coach C always sometimes needed that laugh to get uh to get loosened up as well. So uh, Jeff Coke, a great guy, and uh, he'd want the Colonels to get on the stick a little bit here. They're down twenty three to twenty. At the half. Yeah, Jeff was a big Colonel fan and a big Alta Vista athletic supporter. and you Great be, guy for the community. Great guy for the community, absolutely. Involved in the, uh, the Alta Vista Fire Company there, a bunch of other organizations like that. And, uh, he, yeah, you're right. He'd like the Alta Vista Colonels to kind of get it going just a bit here, Bobby. What, uh, what do we have scoring-wise for the first half numbers? Scoring-wise for the first half, let's start with our visitors from Princeville. Max Barrett had three all in the first quarter. Tyler Dindall with two. Brad Horner leading everybody with ten. Five points from Kettner and three points from Carson Pell. Alta Vista has a deuce from Trey Jones and Ronchez Graves. Lance Bain doubles that with four. Shaheen Pinnell with three and Lawrence Galliard leading all Colonels with nine. 23-20. Brentsville has. We get ready to start the second half momentarily and Brentsville not out yet. You know, here's an oddity, Bob, as we continue this Subway halftime show here. We talked about the big man, Max Barrett, got the two fouls, and he didn't play any in the second quarter. Well, Lawrence Galliard didn't play any in the first quarter for right. Alta Vista, so the matchup that we were talking about so much, we really haven't seen those two on the court together just yet. But I have a feeling in the second half we're going to get to see the six-seven man, Max Barrett, battle against the six-two dragon, Lawrence Galliard, from Alta Vista High School. Brentsville does finally run out here. They didn't get any warm-up shots put up, but it's not mandatory that you have to do that. Most teams just like to shoot around a little bit before the second half. You can hear the pep band in the background, I think. They're sounding pretty good. This is their season debut. 
I think I thought of a few more schools with black and orange. You can okay. correct me if I'm wrong. I like it. Uh, Bath County? Yeah, I believe has black Bath and orange. County, yeah. The Chargers? Yes. The Chargers. Uh, how about Virginia High? Yeah. Virginia High, absolutely. Yes, they do so, have the black and orange. Got some local flavor down there as well. Uh, Mike, Mike Christ is the head football coach. He was an assistant at Brookville for a while. Long time um, son or long time Blacksburg coach, Dave Chris. Mike Chris was his son for a long time too. Uh, and Steve Chris, who used to coach here as an assistant. Yeah. Brad Harper, of course, the athletic director down there. He's a Campbell County guy and uh, good stuff. We're just making our tour all over the state. Right. We've talked about Brentsville in northern Virginia. We've talked about central Virginia. We're down there to the mountains around Bristol. I guess we need to hit the Tidewater area at some point. We'll find a 757. Seven. Seven. Yeah. Exactly. Alta Vista will start on defense. Brentsville will be working left to right from Bob and I's perspective. They lead by three. Looks like they've opened up the second half with their starters. That would be number 30, Brandon Force. Number 22, Brand, uh, excuse me, Brad Harner. Harner's going to fire a three Not close. while I'm talking. It was no good. Hogan, Hogan, Michek, and Barrett are the other five out there for Brentsville. Colonels are in the front court quickly. This is not their starting five. They have Galliard, Graves, Bain, Jones, and Stinnett on the court right now, scoring on the basket to Bob and I's left. It's a three to two. It's a three-two zone defense. Bain gonna fire for three. No good. Was short off the iron. Rebounded away by Michek and Brentsville will bring it up the far sideline on the right hand of Brad Harner. Harner stops as he just gets a foot inside the three-point ring. Lobs downstairs looking for Barrett, but that's taken away by a help side defense from Lance Bain. Colonels move quickly into the front court. Here's Galliard. One dribble. Takes to the skies. Floats. Fires. No good. There was a big time collision and a mass of bodies. Nice sportsmanship there as Barrett was going to help Galliard up. Lawrence Galliard going to shoot the two free throws. It First stoppage in play here in the second half with 7.02 left in the third quarter. 23-20, to 20, the Brentsville advantage. Foul is against Josiah Hogan. That is his second first team foul. Calling this an on-the-floor foul. So the Colonels inbound quickly. They bounce it to Galliard. Middle of the paint. Nice downstairs bounce pass to find Trey Jones waiting on the right-hand block. That one's good for two. Colonels now trail by one. They cut the deficit to one about midway through the second quarter, Bob. What's one thing I love about a big? Passing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was a great pass by Lawrence Galliard. I think a lot of people look at Biggs as the foul is going to go against Bailey Stinn. And I think a lot of people look at Biggs as they're out there to score from the post, they're out there to block shots, and they're out there to rebound. But you can find a lot of big guys. I mean, Magic Johnson was a big guy. He wasn't a center, but he was every bit 6'8". Yeah. Great passer. Sure. Larry Bird, 6'7". Great passer. Galliard's going to intercept the inbound pass. Yeah, those big guys, and sometimes they have the advantage passing because they can pass yeah. over people. They can see different angles that a, a smaller guy wouldn't be able to see. Colonel Basketball, they're in the home white jerseys. They trail by one. Bailey Stinnett going to try and change that. Three-pointers off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Josiah Hogan. Hogan hasn't scored, I don't think, but he's pulled down a bunch of rebounds. Nice little step-around move there by Harner, but the shot was blocked by Lawrence Galliard. He stepped around Stinnett, who was trying to take the charge, but he never saw Galliard coming from the backside for the block. Galliard's got to have five or six blocks tonight. How many threes do you think the Colonels have hit? One? Yep. Shaheen I'm paying attention. Know. Here comes a catch-and-shoot three from Harner. Left corner, no good. Trey Jones had the rebound and lost it. Ronchez Graves picks it up. Now he loses it. Back and forth, little mini turnovers there between the two ball clubs. Graves is going to try and get it. Oh, great good, save. Good Graves took flight to save it back in. Bain scores with the left hand, and the Colonels have the lead back. What a sequence right there. Graves lost the basketball. He worked hard to create another turnover. He had to save it inbounds. He found Lance Bain, and then Bain finished it off to give the Colonels their first lead since the first quarter. Remember, when I was here with you Monday night, it was a save that got things started as well as man down for the Colonels. That is Ronchez Graves that is down at the moment. He took the worst of the contact from Max Barrett, who is streaking to the basket. Barrett is going to get the free throws. Angela Emerson. Great person. Hate calling her name on the radio because normally that means somebody's hurt. She is the athletic trainer from Alta Vista High School. She is worth her weight in gold for sure. She's going to check on Ronchez Graves who is sitting up right now but still on the floor at the moment. He's talking to 
Miss Emerson and her assistant there, so he's obviously in somewhat good shape. He's going to walk off under his own power. More of a trot. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he's... Bust into a trot. That's good to but see. But he's going to have to be taken out. Yes. At least for a play or so. You know, one of the things nowadays I think that everybody gets... Um, I don't know if worried is the right word, but they get alerted about is anytime you hit the floor, where do you hit it? Because if it's the noggin... Concussions. Yeah. And a lot of people, whether, no matter the sport, I don't think it matters. They're serious, uh, serious things in today's day and age. Barrett's going to shoot two. Yeah, the thing with the concussion is it just could have such lasting effects and effects that you might even not, not even notice originally or initially can catch up with you down the road. Barrett misses the first. I mean, if you break your arm, you put it in a cast and it heals. You get a concussion if you don't take the right preventative measures and, and sit out the right amount of time, it could come back to become something else later on, and I think that's the scariest part about it. Colonels break the full court pressure with some good passing. Five or six passes in the backcourt to really break down the full court press. Shaheen Pinnell's in the game. He feeds to Lance Bain. Lance Bain's triple from the left wing, hit the back plate, was off the mark. Carter Duff going to try for three now. Birthday boy can't hit from straight away. 5 There's a steal from Trey Jones, and he'll finish with the right hand. Layup up, layup in. Colonels leading 26-24. to 24. We were tied for a moment after the made free throw from Barrett. Colonels and he, back with the advantage again. Graves is back to the bench. Oh, nice, nice steal, steal by from Bain. Lance Bain. He just really picked off a Brandon forced pass, just ripped it out of the air very nicely. Colonels swing the basketball around from left to right. It's in the right corner in the hands of Trey Jones. Jones faking a couple passes, now bullets it up to the timeline, in front of the timeline, to Carter Duff. 3-2 zone defense from Brentsville. They've been in it all night. The exceptions are when they go to the full court press. Colonel's going to hold the ball outside for a moment. They bounce free throw line to Galliard. Now in the hands of Pinnell. Pinnell kind of casual, fakes a shot, then fakes a pass, then finally does give it up. 4-22 left to play in the Englishes, your complete home center, third quarter. It's a 26-24 Alta Vista lead. Graves, I think, could probably go back in. I think our concussion talk was just to kill some time. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice to get some different talking points for sure. Yeah, your kick out pass to Lance Bain. Three-pointer off the mark, just a bit short. Bain can't seem to find the range tonight. Normally, he hits those. Bob, he's had double figures in five of six games this year, and he's hit multiple three-pointers in five of six games. It's a good stat. Thanks, man. There's still some time for him to... Get another one of those, though, for I thought sure. you were going to say there was still time for me to come up with a good stat. At that, too. We've played four minutes in this third quarter, and the Colonels have taken charge so far. A floater up from Carter Duff was no good. Don't even think it drew iron. Well, the third quarter hadn't been the Colonels' quarter tonight, but Brentsville has not been any better. Well, the Colonels have a lead now. They didn't right. have a lead at halftime, so I would argue that, that it has been their third quarter so far. Not they're like up, we've seen they're they're up in 26, the past. 26-24. Oh, games. no, not, not like Monday and Tuesday. Not yet. Galliard wanted to go to the right side of the hoop, but the ball got wiped out of his hands. It'll stay with Alta Vista. Bailey Stinnett going to check back in for the Colonels. Yeah, it was a 20-10 to 10 quarter for the Colonels in the third quarter on Monday, a 19-9 to 9 third quarter on Tuesday. So... To your point, this hasn't quite been that same explosion. Pinnell's three-pointer was blocked from the backside. He was fouled in the process of shooting, though, and it looks like he's going to have three foul shots here. Shaheem Pinnell, that's the fourth foul on, yeah, Drew Michek. 3.26 left to play in the third quarter. Bob, Pinnell calmly swishes the first one. the Alta Vista Colonels lead. I'm Kyle. He's Bob. A minor technical difficulty. We're going to bring Bob back here in a second. We'll figure some things out. Pinnell misses the second free throw. Substitutes checking in the ballgame for the Alta Vista Colonels include Ronchez Graves and Lance Bain. Pinnell's third one on the way and good. So he makes two out of three that trip to the free throw line. The Alta Vista Colonels extend their lead, 28-24. Full court man-to-man pressure for Alta Vista. Brentsville couldn't get it in. That's a five-second count. Number 30, Brandon Forrest was looking around. He pump faked several times. He never could get the ball in. Referee counted five. It's a turnover. Colonels basketball now 
with 3.26 left to play in the English's Your Complete Home Center third quarter. Plenty of great holiday gift ideas at English's. Trey Jones, 14-foot jumper from the left elbow was no good. Brentsville going the other way. Tigers haven't scored in a while, Bob. And Bob can't answer that right now, but he's going to be able to answer in just one second as I get some equipment changed around up here. Here comes a driving Harner. Up and under lay-in won't fall from the right side. Ball is loose. Big man Barrett has it. He pushes it to the iron. It falls, and he is fouled. Max Barrett had to lower his 6'7 frame to get down and collect the loose ball off the ground. He got it, fired it to the front of the iron, and scores a chance for a three-point play. It's the first foul on number four, Shaheen Pinnell, as Bob and I are working the kinks out. And just like that, you're back, Mr. Alvis. Am I? Yes, you are. You hear that? You know. Loud and clear. Pinnell. Left wing. Now it goes over right side to Ronchez Graves. Graves jump stop. Good bounce inside. Bain wow. pump faked and got three separate defenders up in the air. That's a good solid fake when you can get three guys off their feet. He was fouled. Ball never really left his hand. Colonels lead by one, 28-27. Bain going to attempt to change that from the charity stripe. Well, attempt to extend the lead, that is. Second foul on Harner as Bain does hit the first. Felt like you were gone for so long, Bob. I have been in a way. We talked about it on the uh, during our uh, meal tonight. We haven't done a lot of games together in the past uh, few years. I don't even think the fans can tell. We're just so seamless. Bain does sink both. It's a 30 to 27 Alta Vista lead. Here comes Harner in a hurry. Step around, move again from the right side. Shot was blocked by Pinnell, Jones, and Stinnett. Pick your colonel there as far as who got credit for the block on that one. Ronchez Graves launching for three. No good. Hit the back of the iron. High rebound secured by Carson Pell. Pell weaving his way in and out of traffic. Now a cross-court pass to Harner. He fakes the three from the right wing. Tiger basketball in the front court. Scoring on the basket to our right. Man-to-man defense for the Alta Vista Colonels. They've been in this all night. Forced got around Pinnell, but then good help side defense to cut off his run. Josiah Hogan in and out. No good. Here's the big man Barrett with a rebound and a putback. That's no good, but he's fouled. Looked like Stennett got him in the body there, I think. Well, no, it was on Trayvon Jones. I beg your pardon. It's his third. It's going to send Barrett back to the free throw line. And it's going to give Brentsville the chance to score with the clock stopped. Always a good thing when you're trying to come back. Remember, if you joined us late, Brentsville led at halftime, 23-20. They led after one quarter, 11-8. Colonels did lead briefly in the first quarter but didn't take a lead again until 5.45 left to play in this third quarter. That was when Ronchez Graves saved the basketball in, ended up in the second or third row, and then Lance Bain hit a layup to give the Colonels a lead. Free throws no good, loose ball, looked like bumper cars out there for a moment, but the Colonels have it. Spin move, right side of the paint by Graves. High arcing jump shot is no good, and he could not save this one in. It's out of bounds. It'll go to Brentsville. 144 left to play in the third quarter. The third quarter presented by English is your complete home center. Barrett stands with the ball on the far left sideline. No dribbling. Passes instead to the speedy Carson Pell. Pell, right-hand dribble, waist high. Got to the baseline, then came back towards the three-point line. It's over to Harner. Harner was the hot hand in the first half for Brentsville, Bob. He was really impressing me with his ability to get to the basket. Jump shot from the left side. No good from Pell. It's rebounded by the Colonels. Stinnett angles his way from right to left into the front court. Here's Lance Bain attacking from the left baseline. Goes up, gets fouled. Shot's no good. Bain is going to go to a place where he's very comfortable. The free throw line with 113 left to play in the third quarter. Like you mentioned, a buck 13 to go in the third quarter. That's Josiah Hogan's third. Each team with four team fouls has Bain at the stripe shooting two. First one down. Alta Vista pushes the lead back to three. Lance Bain and Ronchez Graves are statistically the Alta Vista Colonel's best free throw shooters. Bain shoots a few more free throws than Graves does, and he makes both right there, so his average not going to dip any on that trip. They lob it into Harner. He catches at the timeline. couple dribbles, stops at the left wing three-point line. Number 30, Brandon Forst made himself available, and he gives it right back to Harner. Harner's three-pointer, no good. There's Josiah Singleton, rebound, put it on the ground, and the shot was blocked away by Lawrence Galliard. Ball is loose, a scramble for it. Graves rips it away from Barrett. 
They do call a jump ball before Graves could get possession, but the arrow signals Alta Vista basketball. Shaheem Pinnell will check in. 55.3 seconds left in the third quarter. Here comes the full court press from Brentsville. This hasn't been as much of a problem for the Colonels as their 3-2 half court zone has been. Stennett attacked at the free throw line, retreated, gave it up to Galliard. Galliard brings it down the left Good side of the lane, blocked away by Barrett. Yep. He kept giving ground there, and then finally when Galliard went up, that's when he stood his ground and put the big left hand up. There's a steal. Shaheen Pinnell comes out of the fire with it. Sprints across the timeline. Zigzagging, floating to the iron. No good. Rebounded by Carter Duff, who got in there to mix it up. Alta Vista basketball with 20 seconds left in the third quarter. They lead by four, 32-28. Duff going to hold the basketball. No motion just yet. Now it's left wing to Lance Bain. Double team for a moment. One hand wraparound pass to Galliard. He sneaks by the defender and scores from the right side off the bank. Colonels lead 34-28, down to two seconds left. There's a foul by Carter Duff on the far left sideline. I don't think it's a bad foul, honestly. Comes with one second left in the third quarter. Now you got to get the ball back in. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. not going to get as good of a shot. That you could argue that one's going to be a good shot either, but inbound to Harner. Catch and shoot, line drive, three-pointer is no good. We've played three quarters of play, and the Colonels have a lead after three, 34 28, fourth frame on the way when you return to 105.5 KD Country. To become a Moose is an awesome feeling. You just can't belong to a better organization. I was born and raised in the Moose, and I'll be a Moose the rest of my life. My son is a Moose. We're three generation Moose loggers. That's, that's how it is with us. I hope everybody else that can join and become a member, you need to do it. You need to see what, what, it, what it does for us. Why I belong to the Moose for friendship, for the children. And most of all for the seniors. What are you waiting for? Stop by the Moose Family Center in Alta Vista to learn more about how you can be a moose. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Well, after three rounds of play, the Alta Vista Colonels are winning the fight here, 34 to 28. They were behind on the scorecards at halftime, Bobby. They trailed by three at half. Not anymore. They're up six. It was a 14-5 to five a quarter for the Colonels by my count. You know math is not right. my strong suit, so I could be off by a point or two. I'm coming with the boxing analogies. Boxing day, the day after Christmas. Big I want to say I want to say go to the body, but it just doesn't make sense in this time. And Brentsville is going to start the basketball if with you, the basketball here in the fourth quarter. If you were Canadian or British, you would love boxing We've got day. some Canadian friends. I know we do. I, well, I love boxing right. day anyway. Big fan. Brentsville, not out of the backcourt yet after the inbound. They were almost in jeopardy of a 10-second count, but Harner walks it across just in the nick of time. Sizes up Bailey Stinnett, crossover dribble, mainly using the right hand here to bounce around. Head up the whole time looking for a player to pass to. Harner has it back after Dindall caught it for a moment. Now it's Barrett down low. He goes wow. to the right side. The shot was blocked by Bain. Lance Bain really timed up his block well. Pinnell lost it. Got poked away from behind by, by, I believe, Josiah Hogan. There's an off-balance, unorthodox layup try from Brandon Forst. He is fouled. I don't want to quite call it a circus layup, but it was definitely not a conventional lay-in attempt. Well, Forst it's going to go to the free throw line. If you and take shoot out the, that Lawrence Gallier didn't play in the first quarter, that's still pretty remarkable. At this point in the game, he's only got one foul. That yeah. was his first. Yeah. Well, with the way he plays, too, that right. aggressive brand of basketball that he plays, he normally picks up some fouls. Excellent point. Forced sinks the first, spins the basketball, releases, great form, nails the second. Now it's a four-point out to Vista lead again, 34-30. to 30. Free throws really become vital for both. I think right so. Now. I think you're absolutely right. Stennett driving, no help, and tried to lay in off the backboard, but it was pinned there by the tall and lanky Max Barrett. If you're Brentsville, you just look for a good possession. Well, they fired up a quick three. It's no good. Galliard rebounds middle of the paint and flips off to Stennett. That shot probably went up a little bit too quick for Al Ford's liking. Stennett stopped just a few feet inside the half-court strike. Coach Troy Harris wants to take a timeout for the Alta Vista Colonels. We'll take it as well. Colonels lead 34 to 30 over Brentsville. Just under seven minutes left to play in the ballgame on 105.5 KD Country. 
Car buying is simple at Feller Chevrolet. Hi, I'm Greg Walker. You can buy online or at the store. It's quick and easy. Trade values, payment calculators, everything you need is online. We have a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on both new and used vehicles, plus a three-day money-back guarantee so you can buy with confidence. Feller's is also here after the sale. We can do warranty work on all GM vehicles, not just Chevrolet. No matter what your automotive needs, I promise we can deliver. So come see us. You'll be glad you did. Feller Chevrolet in Alta your station for high school sports play-by-play is 105.5 KD Country. Alta Vista 34, Brentsville 30. As Bob and I discuss sports other than basketball, the game on the court right now is pretty good. Yeah. I think both teams have had their moments, and then both teams have had their other moments, we'll call it, yeah. where they haven't looked very sharp. I don't think this is going in time capsule yeah. tonight. Uh, probably the radio broadcast might not either, but... Uh, you know, it's not going in the time capsule, but name of the game is win yes. after it. And, you know, I used this expression the other night when watching a game with friends. They said, that's an ugly shot. No pictures on the scoreboard. Wonderful point. And the Colonels right now have a four-point lead on the scoreboard. Stennett finds a cutting Trey Jones, who calmly and carefully deposits the basketball in for two. Nice job by Jones to make himself available and a good find by Stennett. Colonels lead up to six. Here comes Max Barrett. He made a great cut to the hole. They found him. He was fouled. He kind of timed his jump improperly and got stuck underneath the backboard a little bit. But Barrett will go to the free throw line and shoot a pair. Foul is the second one on Lawrence Galliard. Second one in about, what, a minute or so? Second one this quarter, yep. He didn't have any for a while and has two now. Barrett sinks the first free throw. Pardon me. Why do you think Brentsville is not winning besides the fact they don't have more points than Alta Vista right now? <laughs> Man. I've got I've got the answer. Yep. Jones with a rebound. Go ahead, share it with I him. don't think they have the commitment to the defensive end like Alta Vista has tonight, and I think that's why the Colonels are leading by five. Yeah, Colonels' defense has been pretty good. Let's face it, the Alta Vista man-to-man defense is kind of their trademark. It's something that they've been known for for quite some time. Because the offense has not been stellar. Sure. Yeah, it's had their indifferent moments for sure. Nice feed from Graves downstairs to a waiting Trey Jones. Yeah, that's just too easy of a bucket there for Trey Jones. I mean, he's all alone. There's nobody within about a 10-foot radius of him. And then as soon as he catches, he's right underneath the basket. So it's an easy two-pointer. Three-pointer up and good from Brad Harner. Brentsville needed that. That was a quick trigger from Harner. And he banged it in. 38-34. Colonels lead back to four. Graves in trouble for a moment. Now the Colonels have lost the basketball. Here's Harner again. Right side, sidestep. Swatted out of there by Galliard with a block off the backboard. Colonels going the other way. Three on two, fast break. Graves will pump the brakes and slow things down. He has it left wing. Bluffs a three-pointer. It's a 1-3 zone now for Brentsville. A 1-3 zone. That's a change. It had been a 3-2 zone. Colonels trying to operate against that. Stinnett nearly lost the ball backcourt, and I think he did. Yep. He'll pick it up. I don't think he wanted to pick it up either. I think he knew and was waiting to see what Dindal would do. But you can't just have Dindal pick it up. Then Brentsville's got a bit of a break. Yeah, you've got to let it happen in a way that maybe you can steal the ball right back. But that's not easy. No good way to do that. Harner curls off a screen, catches, jump pass, intercepted. Just ripped out of there by Lawrence Galliard. That wasn't a pickpocket. That was a mugging as Galliard just took the basketball away for the Colonels. That was a volleyball block where you've got two hands up there, essentially. Graves holds it over his head. Now he'll engage the right-hand dribble, picks it up, bounce pass off to Galliard at the free throw line. He whistles it to Bain, right wing. Bain up and under layup. It's blocked, got his own... I guess you call it a rebound, but he got there, the though. block right back in his chest. Yeah, I think Bain was looking for a whistle and couldn't get it. There's a whistle on the other end. Sort of a touch foul as Graves was on, into the left hip of Brad Harner, and Harner's going to go to the free throw line. That's Jones' fourth. Hmm. That's on Trey Jones? Yep. That was the right man. Okay. That's what I need you here for. But now he's going to check in for Jones. And, you know, with Alta Vista's lack of just available bodies, yeah. you, can't, you can't have people getting in foul trouble. Excellent point. I mean, it can happen, but... Yeah, well, it's going to happen, right. but it hampers your chances at winning when it does happen. Harner cans the first. He's got the second one on the way, one-on-one situation. 38-35, Colonels lead by three. Scratch that, they lead by two, 38-36. If one gets in foul trouble, you can live. If yeah. two get in foul trouble, that's bad. If three get in foul trouble... You need the red phone. Yeah, the red phone. 
Pretty great there. Great, great call on that one, Bobby. There's a foul while Bob and I are talking. Lance Bain was fouled going down the right sideline. That's the second one on Tyler Dindall. He's out of the game for a moment. Carson Pell back in. On the floor for the Colonels right now, it's Ronchez Graves, Shaheem Pinnell, Bailey Stinnett, Lawrence Galliard, and Lance Bain. Stinnett fakes a three, driving, scoop layup. It's no good. There's a wrestling match for it between Galliard and Nate Kettner, and the possession arrow signaling Brentsville. I believe it was a jump ball tie-up. Yes, you're right. Alternating arrow. Timeout on the court. Nope, nope. No. I think they're going to check with the book. Oh, about the possession arrow. To see where the possession arrow. I thought it did get flipped. Well, we have 427 left to play in regulation. I, I thought the right. Well, they're going to give the arrow saying that Alta Vista has it. Okay. And really, as a, as a coach on the other side, you really can't argue that, but so much. Princeville does not have anybody doing the book at the table either, which is. Also kind of a deficiency in your argument, just in case. Deficiency in your argument. I like that. Stennett going to circle the defense. Got to the right free throw line, extended, then passed away to Shaheen Pinnell. It's Alta Vista ball scoring on the iron to Bob and I's left. There's a steal by Kettner, and he will lay it in nicely with the right hand. Pardon me, it was Brad Harner. I beg your pardon, and we're tied 38-38. to 38. Four minutes and four seconds left. In the ball game, Bain skies for two, and that's no good. Harner going to race by the defense. Another layup, and Brentsville has a lead again. Coach Troy Harris calls a timeout. We'll take it with them. All of a sudden, the Tigers have snatched the lead back from the Alta Vista Colonels, 40-38. to 38. We've got 352 left in the fourth quarter on 105.5 KD Country. English is so much more. English is more than a hardware store. English is English is is your complete home center. Everything for every job you do. Always here for you. Get the quality you really need. English is so much more. English is more than a hardware store. English is English is is your complete home. Center. On North Main Street, Alta Vista. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. Brad Harner has back-to-back baskets for Brentsville, and the Tigers are in the midst of a 9-0 run right now to take the lead back from the Alta Vista Colonels. It was mainly Brentsville lead in the first half. They led at halftime. Alta Vista stole the lead from them with 5.45 in the third period. And now with 3.52 left in the fourth, they've got the lead again. Each team with three timeouts as well. Alta Vista's got one full and two thirties. Brentsville's got one thirty and two fulls. Well, we talked up the big man Max Barrett, Bob, but Brad Harner is a 6'2 senior, and he deserves a lot of praise, too. He's getting it done tonight for Brentsville. Great defender, scores well around the basket, moves with the basketball, moves without it. Fun player to watch. Graves is in trouble. Jump pass, lobs it high over the defense and finds Lance Bain. 1-3 zone defense, 1-3-1, one, one, pardon me, zone defense for the Tigers. Galliard gets in the air, line drives a pass to Pinnell. Now it's Graves, top of the key. He's driving. Ooh, nice move to get free. In the corner to Bailey Stinnett for three. No good. It was too long. It never even drew iron. Here comes the aforementioned Brad Harner, right side. He loves to score from this right side. Pinnell's guarding him, got by, leaves it off for Hogan, and Josiah Hogan scores quite easily from the left side of the paint. 42-38, Brentsville's run is up to 11-0, and they lead by four. I'll give Brentsville credit, too. They have committed to this zone defense big time. Definitely, definitely. Stennett stops just outside the right edge of the paint, leaves it off for Graves. Graves dribbling inside. Now back outside to Pinnell. Shaheen Pinnell, NBA range three-pointer, launched and no good. Rebounded away by the Brentsville Tigers. Harner will walk it into the front court. Down to 245 left to play in the ball game. Got to get a stop. Be careful here, yeah. Here's a high ball screen for Harner. Fakes left, goes right, bounced it off of his own foot. Mm, Sands, no, it's Bailey off of Stennis Stennis foot. foot. Brentsville basketball. Trey Jones checks back in. He'll spell Pinnell and a timeout by Brentsville. One They'll minute timeout. We'll take 30 seconds of that timeout. Brentsville leading 42-38. 2.37 left to play in the ball game here from Alta Vista High School on 105.5 KD Country. 
Napa Auto Parts says thank you to all their customers for a great 2017. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Napa's employees, Mike, Mary, Kenny, Whitey, Richard, Johnny, Kevin, Jim, Billy, and Randy. Visit Napa Auto Parts in Alta Vista for the best quality auto parts at the best prices. Napa appreciates your business and looks forward to serving you in 2018. Napa Auto Parts on Main Street, Alta Vista, across from Feller Chevrolet. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. Fourth quarter action here between Alta Vista and Brentsville High School. It's a 42-38 Brentsville Tiger lead. Colonels came into this fourth quarter leading by six. They trail by four now, Bob. That means these Tigers are on one heck of a run. I think it's 11-0 at the moment. Right. Yeah, don't want to necessarily do math. I was told that wouldn't be required tonight. But uh, if you're out to Vista, you've got to figure out a way to get a stop. I don't think the defense has been terrible, but it's just been Brentsville getting these points in transition. Yeah, they've gotten a lot of transition buckets. Brentsville's defense has tightened up themselves. You mentioned the commitment to that zone defense. Tigers get it in. Now they've lost it. Trey Jones with a steal. Got helped out from Ron Chess Graves. Colonels quickly into the front court left. Here's Stennett. Hesitated for a moment. Now dishes inside to Jones. Nice feed, and Trey Jones scores from the left side of the paint. That breaks the 11-0 run. Colonels with a much-needed basket. They're back within two. 2.15 left to play in the fourth quarter. Buckle your seatbelt. There's a takeaway by Bailey Stinnett. He got it from Hartner and then lost it. Graves now with the follow-up, and that's good. Hartner lost it. Stinnett couldn't score his layup, but Graves was there with the follow. We're tied again. Another timeout on the court. Brentsville takes it this time. We'll take it too. 42 all with 2.05 left to play in the fourth quarter on 105.5 KD Country. Thinking of starting a business or expanding your company? Think about choosing Alta Vista as your location to invest and grow. Alta Vista offers low utility cost, broadband internet, U.S. 29 access, and an attractive quality of life. Like the Colonels, it's a slam dunk when you invest in Alta Vista. Game plan with the Alta Vista Office of Economic Development at Alta Vista Town Hall. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Well, when we brought it back from the last time out, the Alta Vista Colonels were trailing by four. Now they're tied up, 42 all. I'm Kyle. He's Bob. This is a lot of fun. Buckle that safety belt, Bobby. Bailey Stennett didn't get the layup to go, but nobody was coming to rebound except for Ronchez Graves. Graves gets it easy to end. Tied up. Colonel showing some full court. Great hustle by Graves to follow up there. Kettner pops free. They're still in the backcourt. Brentsville, that is. Now, number 22, Brad Harner will get it across the timeline. He'll initiate the offense. Guarded by Stennett. Stennett got the steal on him last time. This is a good battle to watch. Stennett is all over him as Harner picks up the basketball. Oh, and then they lost it. The pass was a little off the mark looking for Nate Kettner. But I think the pressure, the Colonels' man-to-man defensive pressure beginning to bother Brentsville again. Brentsville did not sit down during that timeout either, and it was a full one-minute timeout, which you don't see a lot. That Brentsville only has one timeout left. It was the Bernard Hopkins move, right. another <laughs> boxing reference. Stennett has it left of center, front court left for the Colonels. Graves bouncing to the free throw line, then gives it up. Timeout on the court by the Alta Vista Colonels. Troy Harris takes it with 1.28 left to play in the fourth quarter. Let's just keep it right here, Bob. We've taken several timeouts in the last few moments, and this one is just a 30-second timeout. Let's reset the stage here. We're tied 42-42. Brentsville led by three at halftime. Colonels led by four after the end of three quarters of play. It seems like this one has had a sloppy, disjointed feel at times. But I'll tell you, this last four or five minutes here in the fourth quarter, this has been a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I think Alta Vista, one thing I've noticed is it seems like they're giving Barrett too much credit on the defensive end. He's got two fouls. I mean, you can take it at him, see if he's going to try to block a shot and maybe get him to draw a foul. But whenever he holds up his hand, they're just dishing it right away. I think maybe try to challenge Barrett, see if he'll pick up a foul. What do you have to lose? Barrett is the 6'7 man for Brentsville, and no doubt he's a rim protector, a paint protector. But to your point, yeah, you got to at least make him earn some of that. Don't don't just go on reputation alone where you dish it up immediately just because he's in the same zip code. I agree with you. 
Might Perfect. be interesting to see how long Alta Vista can milk the offensive possession. Stinnett nearly lost it, nearly walked with it too, and then it goes out of bounds off of Lance Bain's hands. The pressure seemingly getting to both teams just a bit. Well, I think Bain was ready to go towards the basket before he had the basketball in hand. Alta Vista now going to show the full court. And now they'll back off. Good job by the Tigers to get it in. This is number 30, Brandon Forrest. Never mind, one time out the timeline. Line. That's, That's right. it. One for Brentsville. Colonels have two timeouts. Five-second count? No. Yes, it yes, is. Okay. It's a five-second count. The Colonels' defense has again got a turnover. The five-second rule to encourage continuous play. Forced never broke that six-foot cushion, never passed the basketball, and it ends up being a turnover. Now, again, if you're out to Vista, you can be the band leader here offensively and decide how much time you want to use. 60 seconds left in the ballgame. We're tied 42-42. A double team about 30 feet away from the baskets. Now it's down low to Galliard, and he had the ball stripped out of his hands. Josiah Hogan comes up with it for the Tigers. Brentsville will go to the line if they are fouled. Alta Vista will not. Great point. We're all knotted up at 42. Forced behind the back dribble. Picks up the dribble. Down low to Max Barrett. Barrett muscles in and scores, and he's fouled. He lowered the right shoulder and sort of drilled it right into Galliard's chest. Lawrence Galliard was hoping he could get a block out of the deal, but instead Barrett scores, has a chance at the old-fashioned three-point play. That breaks the 42-all tie. Brentsville now on top, 44-42. Barrett will shoot one, but now Brentsville will be in the double bonus on the next foul. Yes, nine team fouls for the Alta Vista Colonels. Here's a timeout by Brentsville coach Al Ford. We will take this timeout. 37.5 seconds left in the ball game. Colonels trail by three. Let's see what happens in these last few moments on 105.5 KD Country. PCM Industrial of Alta Vista offers mobile welding and repair services, fully equipped service trucks, certified craftsmen, and quick response to satisfy your needs. Contact PCM Industrial at powerconstruction.com. PCM Industrial is a fully insured Class A licensed contractor, OSHA and MSHA compliant. PCM Industrial Services of Alta Vista wishes Coach Harris and the Alta Vista Colonels basketball team good luck in another winning season. Go Colonels! We are back from Alta Vista High School. It's the Alta Vista Colonels taking on Brentsville, the Tigers, and the Tigers at the moment lead 45-42. We were tied 42 all, and then Max Barrett with a big bucket and a subsequent free throw that he made afterwards. Bobby, you and I were just talking about it off air. You don't have to have a three-pointer here. If you get an open look, though, do you want to try it with 30? Yeah, I was going to say, we, some we seconds? never shut up. Uh, <laughs> it depends on who has it. If Bain has it, I'm probably taking it. He does have it. Left wing right now. Looked like he thought about it, but instead goes to Graves. Graves dribbles. Top of the key. Right free throw line extended. Now it's over to Stinnett. You're down to 26 seconds left. Galliard gets to the middle of the paint. Five feet away. Leaves it off for Jones. Jones, a short pass. Lost the ball. Now it's Ronchez Graves for three, and it's good. Ronchez Graves times it up with 17 seconds left. Number five, the sophomore, Ronchez Graves. Got the basketball. He was really wide open at the top of the key, Mr. Alvis. The Colonels almost lost it inside as Jones tried too short of a pass to Lawrence Galliard. It got kicked around. Could have argued that maybe it was a kickball and somebody from Brentsville. Graves picks it up, scores, tied 45-45, our fifth tie of the ball game. There's a timeout on the court, but we're keeping it right here with 15.5 seconds left. Troy Harris, I think, was trying to feverishly call the timeout before Before the shot. The shot. Yeah. And nobody recognized it. Uh, Alta Vista was really putting themselves in a position where they were going to have to shoot a three at that point just because the clock was running down. 15.5 to go. If you're out to Vista, the one thing you do not want to do in this case is foul. It's yeah. two shots no matter where it is, on the floor or in the act. But if you're out to Vista, I think you can maybe try to put some token pressure on the backcourt and at least make Brentsville. Brentsville has no timeouts, too. Keep right. that in mind. So if they get trapped in a corner or something, they're going to be out of luck or they're going to have to pull a miracle. Excellent point there by you. It is nine team fouls on the Alta Vista Colonels. So the next one they commit, Brentsville will be shooting no matter what. I could argue that it might be tougher to make the free throws in this situation than maybe a layup or something like that. But that's a debate for another time. 
Tigers will inbound. Full court man-to-man pressure for the Alta Vista Colonels. They lob it into Harner. Harner gets to the right edge of the paint. Floats. Foul on the floor. Who's it on? It's an offensive foul on Brad Harner. Lawrence Galliard stood his ground seven feet away from the basket on the right side and took the charge. The shot didn't go in anyway. The rebound would have been a battle for sure, but it's out to Vista Ball now after the offensive foul on Brad Harner. All right, now let's look at it 12. this way. 12.1 seconds left. 12.1, that was a bad foul because now you lost that foul to give. Next right. foul from Brentsville puts out the Vista 1-1. One one. That's Harner's third. Graves circles, comes free across the timeline, bounces inside to Bain. Bain took some contact and got fouled. The shot attempt never really got out of his hands, but the best free throw shooter for the Alta Vista Colonels is on the line now with 6.5 seconds left. The foul is on number 23, Josiah Hogan. They're going to say one and one. They're going to say that was on the floor. Okay. Seemed to be in the act of shooting to me, even though Lance wasn't off the ground. It looked like he was going to shoot. Well, Hogan had no choice because Bain was going to get an easy layup, and Hogan just kind of fell into him. We're tied 45 Now the officials are talking about it. They are discussing. Honestly, I think it's a one and one too. It's got to be one and one It's not a it's a one and one situation. Yeah, you're right. Lance Bain, very steady from the free throw line, but... Normally, you're not shooting free throws under this kind of pressure with 6.5 seconds left. 45-45 is our score between Alta Vista and Brentsville. Bain takes his time. Knee bends, spins the ball. Oh. It's in and out. No good. Rebound is loose. Galliard in a wrestling match for it, and it's a jump ball. Mutual possession. The possession arrow favors Brentsville. 5.3. No timeouts for the Tigers. Alta Vista cannot foul without putting Brentsville to the line. Drew Michek will inbound. Doesn't have anybody available yet. Taking a lot of time. Now throws it in. Gets it to Carson Pell. Pell to the three-point line. Puts up a strange three-pointer. It's no good. It's out of bounds, and there's the final horn. I think there should be Looks some like time we're back going home. to overtime. Yes, the officials are going to go over here to the scorer's table. There may be a second or so left. I think it's probably going to be like tenths. I think there's got to be some time put back on. Nope. They're going to say... The Colonels are either going to have a few seconds here or I think it's like point three, honestly. 45-45 is our score between Alta Vista and Brentsville. The Tigers led by three at halftime. Point the, four. The officials are conferring again. I think. I don't know. I thought time was going to go back on the clock because the ball... Well, no, we're, not. Just, we're going to overtime. They're just talking about how long the overtime should be. Doesn't seem like there should be a discussion there. It's always been a four-minute overtime, right? Four more minutes of basketball here from Alta Vista High School. Hey, Bobby, guess what? Overtime's brought to you by English's, your complete home center, your headquarters for your headquarters. Pardon me for Carhartt clothing for men and women. Well, Brush Show gets finish. an extra timeout back, yep. so they get one. Alta Vista should now have two. I believe. So, yeah, they've got two up yeah, there. Yeah, they got Brentsville two on the wrong side for Alta Vista. That's not right. That's why you we'll got keep me. Keep an eye on that. Absolutely. Now, now the situation though too is everybody's shooting fouls the rest of the way, and Brentsville's got a couple with four on the foul column for them. They'll go to jump circle again. It'll be Lawrence Galliard jumping against Max Barrett. Galliard's got three. On and the court for Alta Vista, it is Galliard, Graves, Stennett, Jones, and Lance Bain. Yeah, Galliard playing with three fouls. A couple other guys that are sort of in an almost danger zone. Official throws it up. Galliard wins the tip. Throws it back. Colonels are still scoring on the basket to our left. It's a sparse crowd here at Alta Vista, but they've really come alive. Why wouldn't they? It's overtime basketball, 45 all. Graves, right side of the paint, five feet away now ejects it from the interior, sends it back out to Bailey Stinnett. Colonel's ball in the home, white jerseys, orange and black trim. No Here's shot Stinnett clock driving. in high school. You can really pick your poison on shooting. Bain's shot wouldn't fall. Galliard got his fingertips on it. Now he's got the basketball back after losing it for a moment. Good pump fake, scores off the bank and in. Colonel's lead again, 47-45. Just three minutes and 19 seconds left to go in the first overtime period. Never know. Might be seeing more. Yeah, You're four, right. Four game week, that's all you need. Extra period. That's right. More basketball. Great stuff. Three-pointer on the way for Brentsville. It was no good from the right hand of Brandon Forst. 
Graves will race it up the far right sideline. Ooh, lost the ball in his hip for a moment. It's a good thing he didn't travel. Now he gets it back after giving it to Lawrence Gallier just for a moment. I think There's they've a come out of that zone. Timeout on the court for Alta Vista. Let's take a 30-second timeout, too. Colonels lead by 40. Colonels lead 47-45. 249 left to play in the ball game on 105.5 KD Country. Are you prepared for the cold weather? D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling is, and they can get your home winter ready, too. Call 841-1580 to get in touch with Donnie and his trained professional staff. 434-841-1580. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling can handle any HVAC issue in your home or business. And they get it done quickly and properly. Merry Christmas from D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling. 841-1580. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. 249 left in overtime between Brentsville and Alta Vista. Right now, the Alta Vista Colonels lead by two. Their basketball, they throw it into Graves. You mentioned no shot clock, so you could milk things down right. a bit, but you got to be careful because it's a high-pressure defense from the Tigers, as evident here. Double team for a moment. Graves was lucky to get rid of it. Got out of that zone, though, or they're extending it a lot. Yeah, it's a good point. It's hard to tell right now if it's a zone or a man, and may just be some kind of hybrid. It looks like a man-to-man yeah, to me, I think the way so they're too. marking everybody pretty tight. Galliard pops free to catch the inbound pass from Stinnett. Stinnett bounce pass. Left side, Lance Bain. Bain floats it to the iron. No good. Trayvon Jones with a rebound for the Colonels. Sends it back out to Bailey. Stinnett. Stinnett, three ball. No good. Off the iron. Nice leaping rebound from That's Josiah Hogan. And yeah, he's fouled by Trey Jones. Trey Jones, you got to sympathize a bit there. I mean, he just barely put a hand on Hogan. And they call the foul. And then there's other times when you can get bodied up and down the court and they don't blow a whistle. Trayvon Jones, Knight is done with five fouls. Shaheem Pinnell has entered the game for the Alta Vista Colonels. Letter of the law. Yeah. Foul's a foul. Foul's a foul. I like it. You sound like a lawyer. <laughs> Josiah Hogan will shoot two. Running for office. <laughs> Commonwealth's attorney. <laughs> Hogan will shoot two from the charity stripe. Tries to go off the window for the free throw, and it's no good. Watch when uh, Brentsville goes back on defense. It looked like the only person that was playing a zone was Barrett. Interesting. Everybody yeah. else looked like they were in a man. Interesting way to do it. Second one on the way from Hogan. That's off the bank and in. Cuts the Alta Vista lead to one, 47-46. High drama here from Central Virginia on a Thursday night. Pinnell catches far sideline. Bullet pass back to Stinnett. Now over to Graves, right of center. Graves driving. Bounce pass to the low post. Short corner. Finds Bain. He sends it back out. Colonels are trying to spread out this Brentsville defense. They get Bain again. Bain, pump fake. Lost the handle. Looking at the basket. Timeout by head coach Troy Harris. 30-second timeout. 157 left to play in the ball game. Colonels lead by one. We take the timeout, too. We're back in 30 seconds on 105.5 KD Country. What do basketball, choir, drama club, and marching band all have in common? They're all high school activities that offer learning opportunities not necessarily found in the classroom. They take up just a fraction of a typical Virginia high school's budget, and they go a long way to giving young people the tools they need to thrive. High school activities, they're more than extracurricular. They're extra important, too. Brought to you by English Construction Company, with offices in Lynchburg. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. The Alta Vista Colonels lead by 147-46. It was 45-45 at the end of regulation. First overtime game that we have seen in a while, Mr. Alvis. I don't think we had any last year. I'm, he's racking his brain. Don't worry. You have to call Let's Oscar. move past it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move past it. What do you think here? You think the Colonels are... Not keeping their foot on the gas enough, or you like them spreading it around? I like Brentsville's defense. Yeah, I do honestly, too. I think that's what's forcing these timeouts. And you probably know where I'm going with this. When you get out of timeouts, again, you don't have to inbound the ball until you want to within the five seconds. Pinnell gets it on the inbound pass, left corner. He'll pull up from 14 feet. No good. Rebound is still a bit loose. Josiah Hogan took it away from Bailey Stinnett. Here comes Brad Harner. Harner. Nearly got to the basket, but Stinnett hustled down to cut him off. It's Brentsville basketball in the front court right with 140 left to play in overtime. A chance to take the lead with a basket here. Harner pump fakes the three, steps inside, floats from 10 feet. No good. Lawrence Galliard rebound left side of the paint. 
Good job by Galliard. He took some contact there, sort of glared at the official. Didn't say anything, but you could tell what the message was. Colonel's in trouble. Graves lost the basketball for a moment. Good job to recover and get it to Lawrence Galliard. They're in the front court left with a one-point lead, 47-46. Oh, tight window there for Bain as he tried to pass it along the far sideline to Bailey Stinnett. Why I said the Colonels were in trouble when it went off Ronchez's leg. It went backwards. No timeouts, and you've got 10 seconds to get it across. Tough to go backwards yeah. and get the ball. Yeah, it's like a bad snap for a quarterback. Bad hop in for baseball. Love our cross-sport analogies. Right. We'll keep doing it. Pinnell was double-teamed for a moment, but he was able to get out of it and give it to Graves. It's a lot of double-teaming from this zone-slash-hybrid man here that Brentsville is in. Graves left it off for Bain, but the pass was too Barrett. hot to handle. Yeah, Barrett helped break it up. Harner a little bit out of control, trying to work his way to the backboard. Lost the basketball on the way up. Still going to be Brentsville ball with 42, 42 seconds yeah, they, left. The, the clock is not showing tense hmm. right now. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, steal by Lawrence Galliard. Stepped in front of an errant pass from Harner. Get Harner's it across. disappointed with himself. Graves in trouble, and he picked up the dribble, then got slapped. Harner's going to go over there and check to make sure he's okay. He kind of got popped in the eye. Good sportsmanship by number 22, Brad Harner. And Ronchez Graves returns the favor. That's the fourth one on Harner. 34 seconds left in the ball game. The Colonel's still leading by one. 47-46. KH, you know me pretty well. If you're going to pick up fouls 7, 8, and 9, get them on the floor. Yeah. At least have them be one and ones If you can help it. Right. Graves, first one up and good. Ronchez Graves was a perfect 6-for-6 six six from the charity stripe on Tuesday night, Bob. He's a steady hand there. Alta Vista now leading by 2, 48-46. A three-point lead would be big. Princeville's got one timeout left. Second one up. No good. Hung on the iron for just a moment, but would not drop. Harner. High steps into the front court. Gets to the right wing. Crossover dribble. Taking his time. Clock down to 24 seconds. Brentsville trailing by two. Three-pointer would give him the lead here. Harner thinking about it from the right wing. Sizing up Stinnett. Down to 15 seconds. Al Ford telling his team to move. Down to 12 seconds. Harner. Crossover dribble. Attacking. Up and under. Lay-in. Won't go. He's tapped on the arm and fouled. Harner with a pretty good look there to penetrate the defense. He's going to have to tie it up from the free throw line with nine seconds left. Foul went against Bailey Stennett, his third. 48-46. You feel those butterflies, Bob? Those are in your stomach. They're not, they're not outside. It's wintertime out there. Harner, good free throw shooter. First one's up, first one's good. Got to block out here if you're the Alta Vista Colonels. They've got four guys surrounding the paint compared to just two for Brentsville. I have a feeling if Harner makes this, Brentsville might call a timeout. It's good. Tied up again. 48-48. Colonels will have nine seconds to work with. Stinnett's going to pick it up. He can run the baseline. Gets it into Shaheen Pinnell. Whoa. Pinnell's going to fire a half-court shot for some reason. There's still four seconds left. Now Max Barrett does the, the same, and that hit the support apparatus. Ball will be dead with one second left. The Alta Vista Colonels are going to have the ball with one second left. Pinnell clearly thought that the clock was coming down to an end, and Alta Vista still had about seven seconds. You did say first overtime earlier. Lob pass into Pinnell. It's broken up, and we're going to go to a second overtime. We're tied 48-48, 32nd timeout as we head to overtime number two on 105.5 KD Country. Whatever your truck, car, SUV needs are, Highview Motors GMC has it all from small to tall. New to pre-owned, offering more than just GMC sales. Highview Motors GMC provides 24-hour towing, full-service body shop, state inspection, transmissions, everything in between. Highview Motors GMC, providing top quality service since 1961. From small to tall, we got it all. Highview Motors GMC. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Oh, we're into overtime number two. You're really getting your money's worth here on KD Country tonight. We're tied 48 to 48. Brad Harner sinks a couple free throws with a lot of pressure with nine seconds left. He makes those to tie it up. Colonel's going to inbound. Shaheen Pinnell takes an early 60-foot try, something you would 
save for the final buzzer, but Alta Vista still had seven seconds. Well, and then Max Barrett gets the ball for Brentsville, and I think he heard yeah. his shot yeah. because he saw Pinnell take his so early. I'm going to give you some credit, though. You bring up, you brought up a good point off the air because the clock normally shows tenths. Yeah, and that said 0.08. Yeah, so you just wonder. I think was it in the head? Did Pinnell right. think that there was only point right. eight seconds left? Right. Absolutely, that's a, that's a good point by you. We're back at jump circle again. This time the you're not the only one that can compliment. <laughs> <a partner. laughs> that's right. This time Brentsville wins it. Four more minutes of basketball, at least. We haven't seen double overtime in a while. I can't tell you when the last time we saw triple overtime was. Maybe on a Thursday night in late December, 2017. We'll get some more. Harner's gonna. Try and probe the defense a bit. Now he'll back out. He's five steps inside the half-court strike. Nearly walked. Probably did walk. Brentsville may be lucky. No call. Each team gets a timeout, too. Forced fired for three. It's no good. Bad thing is those fouls don't reset. As Ron Chaz lost it off his leg, it'll belong to Brentsville. Yeah, 323, 325 left to play in overtime. Yeah, the fouls, you don't get any extra Mm. fouls. That could end up being a problem the longer Or you don't this get to push goes. him back. Brad Harner triggering the three-pointer. No good. It just barely kissed the front of the iron. No. Harner's got four. Yes. And he's, I would argue, the man for Brentsville right now. He tied it up with a pair of free throws with nine seconds left in the last overtime. It worries me how quiet Barrett's been. He has been quiet. Five-second call. Brentsville can't get it in again. That's about the third yeah. time they've been unable to inbound it. Great pressure defense from the Alta Vista Colonels. Is this a timeout? The official signaling. Yes, it is a timeout. It was a kind of a loose signal there. We'll take a timeout, too. 30-second break for us. We're still tied. 48-48. 321 left to play in the second overtime on 105.5 KD Country. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving family since 1905. Personal, memorable, memorial Celebrating life and more. Pre-arrangements with confidence. Trust and care from our family to yours. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving families since 1905. Your station for high school sports play-by-play is 105.5 KD Country. Double overtime is always a lot of fun for the broadcasters. The coaches get a lot more gray hairs. I bet the officials get some gray hairs, too. We're tied 48-48. to Brentsville ball, front court right. We're about 40 seconds or so into this second overtime period. Brentsville has a timeout. Oh, Forrest came very free, and he scores from the right side. Somebody from the Colonels missed an assignment there. Brentsville leading 50-48. It's their first lead in a while. First Almost lead steal. Maybe the third quarter, I think. Pinnell jogs it to the three-point line. Here's Galliard trying to force his way through four Brentsville defenders. Can't. Shot's no good. They've got a steal, though. Galliard gets it back. Goes to the left side and scores. And he is fouled. Lawrence Galliard making up for what was sort of an error on the moment before when he tried to take on four defenders. Gets a steal and scores. We're tied again. Lawrence Five. Galliard with a chance to break the tie, and it is... The fifth foul on Drew Michek. His night is done. Now keep in mind, Brentsville's bench is not not littered with uh, Tigers either. It's not very deep. You're right. It's not a deep bench. Two other players available, so they're down to seven total. Not going to have that Alabama situation where they're going to have to play with three. Well, Galliard does right. Galliard does break the tie, sinks the free throw. Colonels lead again, 51 to 50. What a ball game. Dendo checked in, by the way. Gotcha. Colonels have had one player foul out. That was Trey Jones. That happened in the fourth quarter, right? Yeah. Seems like a long time ago. It was. Here's Harner. Pump fake from the top of the key. Now dribble in. Loves the right hand. He's got the left hand he can go to, but you can tell he favors the right a bit. Going to work off a screen. Angling back to the hoop. Blocking foul on Bailey Stinnett. Stinnett tried to take another charge. He did that in the fourth quarter. That could have been huge, too, because that would have been Harner's fifth. Yeah. Great job by Stinnett to try and get there. I love the bold play. And you got to tip your cap to Harner, not worrying about the four fouls, just continuing to attack. I think in high school basketball, it's hard to get an offensive, uh, to draw a charge, unless you're just flat standing still and getting in transition. Yep. Harner ties it again by making the first free throw. We're knotted up 51-51. Not saying it's impossible. 
Yep, Bailey Stinnett now is playing with four fouls, by the way. Sub will come in. Kettner. And the problem is, Harner's so good, you can't do the old offense for defense. Right, he's got to stay Then you can't get him back in. Then you're really looking with egg on your face. See if Harner can give him the lead. He does. He makes both. He made both to tie it in the first overtime. Brentsville up 52-51. Colonels rushing in the front court. Pinnell, quick trigger, and he scores from three. Shaheen Pinnell gives the lead right back to Alta Vista with a three-pointer from the right wing. 54-52. Colonels up to 2.18 left to play in the second overtime. I think Alta Vista's on his own now. I think you might be right. Pinnell guarding the basketball. It was number 30 force that had to get rid of it. He was closing in on a five-second count again. Harner directing traffic from the top of the key. He's can't tell if it's a 1-2-2 two, two or 2-3. Two, Stinnett going to come down, hand in the face of Harner. His three-pointer was no good from the right corner. A rebound from Forrest. Leaves it off for the big man, Barrett. Barrett got bumped in the body. Three it seconds. is a three-second count. Oh, my goodness. You rarely see a three-second call. Bail out Galliard big time because that would have been four. In a double overtime game, okay. Colonels get the ball back. They're up by two. Graves in trouble for a moment. Now over to Stennett. He's free. They get it across the timeline with some nice quick passing. Galliard lost it. It's loose. It's still on the floor. Loose. Hogan had it. Bain dives for it for the Colonels. He's able to snatch it back somehow. Timeout. Timeout by <laughs> Coach Troy Harris, who is down on the ground, smacking the floor, trying to get the officials' attention. It looks like a 30-second timeout to I me. I think it's no. all full at is. this point. It's a one-minute timeout. Let's take 30 seconds of it, Bob. Alta Vista leads 54-52. 91 seconds left to play in the second overtime on 105.5 KD Country. I'm Jeff Walker of First National Bank and the manager at our Main Street branch in Alta Vista. Did you know that local bankers have a lot more at stake in taking better care of you? You see, helping local customers like you be more successful is our only focus. And each customer is so important. So for your small business, construction, and personal loan needs, think of me and think of us first. That's local First National Bank. We'll help you bring home more bacon. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. What a night here from Alta Vista High School in night one of the Jeff Koch Memorial Invitational. Colonels lead at the moment 54-52. They just used their final timeout. For reference, Brentsville has one timeout remaining. Colonels trailed by one. Then Shaheem Pinnell hit a three-pointer from the right wing to give Alta Vista the lead right back. Pinnell hasn't scored a lot, but when he has scored, they've been big buckets. Alta Vista gets it inbounds. Graves had to tightrope the timeline for a moment. Now it's Pinnell at the top of the key. Dribbles, picks up the dribble. Back to Graves. Colonel's kind of playing keep away for the moment. Yep, it's going to just be pull it back out. Penetration by Pinnell. Finds an open. Stin it down low. Scores the bucket. Colonel's now lead by four. 56-52. Great find by Pinnell. Pass was on target. And Stin it scored from the right side. Brentsville still with over a minute to play. They lost the basketball. Timeout. No, it's a no foul. foul. It's a foul on Ronchez Graves. It looked pretty clean, but they're going to call Graves with a foul. It's One third. minute exactly left to play in the ball game. One minute left to play in the second overtime. Brad Harner is at the charity stripe again. He's made his last four, and they've all been pretty big free throws. Kind of interested to see what happens with the clock when it rolls under a minute now. Yeah, because it wasn't showing tenths of a second in the first overtime. Harner does sink the first. He's got a great stroke. Good player. Second one on the way. Alta Vista leading by three at the moment. Now they lead by two as Harner connects again both times from the charity stripe. You go at your pace, though. Stinnett will inbound. He can run the baseline. It's a full court press from Brentsville. I'm Stinnett sure the basically. defense is going to try to speed out Vista, though, Kyle. Stinnett picks up the dribble. Bounce pass off to Graves. Graves in the front court to Pinnell. Bounce pass to a streaking Lance Bain. It was blocked. Out. There was a foul on Lance Bain. Like Lawrence Galliard dunked it home afterwards. That's why the crowd is on their feet. That dunk does not count. Lance Bain will be on the free throw to shoot two. Alta Vista leading by two, 56-54. Foul is on Hogan, his fifth, according to the board. Hmm. they got to get him out. Yeah. 
We're in the second overtime here between Brentsville and Alta Vista. Yes, now the scorer's table is alerting the officials that that's five fouls on Hogan. Josiah Hogan, number 23. And as you said, nobody doing the scorebook for Brentsville. Well, they got somebody on the bench. Okay. One of the coaches okay. is doing it. But yep. Hogan will walk over and Carson Pell back in the ball game. We saw Pell in the first half in the third quarter. He played some pretty valuable minutes. Pretty good player, just a freshman. Does have tenths, by the way, now. And this is a big yep. free throw, by the way, as well. Bain is up. Bain is trying to put the Colonels up four. He does. Make them both from the charity stripe. Out to Vista leads. 58-54. Brentsville back to the wall again here with 45 seconds. Pell going to pull really quickly. It's no good. Really couldn't even get any rebounders set up. Colonel's basketball. Graves into the front court. Breaks the timeline. I think you're right. They do foul intentionally, and that's number 22. It's on Harner. Harner, so that's five. five for him. Do they have anybody to put in? I think wow. they got one guy left. Yeah. 33, Tyler Dindall going back. He, he fouled out, didn't he? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Dindall will go back in. It's five on Brad it. Harner. Yeah, three players have fouled out for Brentsville. Bailey Stinnett is at the charity stripe now with 36.5 seconds left. He can extend the Alta Vista lead. They're already up four, 58-54. Oh, the gym got eerily quiet. Stinnett sinks the first with sort of a flat free throw. Makes it. What a night. What a night. Colonels lead up to five now. If he gets it up to six, Alta Vista fans are going to feel pretty comfortable. Oh, Bain stepped into the lane. Lance Bain stepped in, and that's a free throw lane violation. It's going to be no good. It's going to keep the Alta Vista lead at five. 36.5 left to play in the ball game. I don't Turner think was you the need, best scorer, and he's out. I don't think you need the three right now if you can get a quick two. Pell will try the three anyway. It's no good. Rebound is loose. Now Bain has it, and he's... Sort of lassoed around the leg there by number 33, Tyler Dindall, who's trying his best to get the ball back. Lance Bain going to go to the free throw line. He is deadly accurate from there, and this could be all she wrote for Brentsville. But you got to tip your cap to the visiting Tigers. Man, what a game that they play. Keep in mind, they got to play tomorrow, too. They do. That's going to be a tough night tomorrow for both teams. No doubt about that. And they'll have the shorter turnaround. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the Colonels will get a few extra hours to rest up and recover. But I don't think either way it's a it's a big deal, truthfully. It's just out to this is will be on their fourth game. Yeah, fourth game of the Five week. Five days. Colonels look like they're going to win their third one in as many tries this week. Free throw converted by Lance Bain. He's got another one. Out to Vista up six now with 27 seconds and change left. Bain, ooh, in and out, no good. Lead will stay at six, so that's important. Now Couple you got to shoot three. I agree. I don't think you got time for the two. Pell, pump fakes. Now he will fire for three. It's no good. Lance Bain with, or excuse me, Gallier with an uncontested rebound. Graves will get it. Looks like that's going to bring an end to our ball game. We've still got a 10 seconds left. Let's see if Brentsville fouls. Doesn't look like it. Bain wanted to score, and it's no good. Down to three seconds. Alta Vista is going to win a wild one, a double overtime thriller here. And there's a big roar from the crowd. A very well-deserved applause for the Alta Vista Colonels. They win it 60-54. to Subway postgame show on the way when we come back to 105.5 KD Country. It's cold in here. Will your heating system keep you warm this winter? Or will you spend a cold evening shivering under the covers? Have your heating system inspected today by Tyree Little's Heating and Cooling. Kent Tyree has over 20 years experience and specializes in heating, air, plumbing, and electrical. Licensed and bonded. Call for an appointment today. 309-2266. 309-2266. Tyree Little's Heating and Cooling. To become a moose is an awesome feeling. You just can't belong to a better organization. I was born and raised in a moose, and I'll be a moose the rest of my life. My son is a moose. We're three-generation moose loggers. That's, that's how it is with us. I hope everybody else that can join and become a member, you need to do it. You need to see what, what, it, what it does for us. Why I belong to the moose. For friendship, for the children, and most of all, for the seniors. What are you waiting for? Stop by the Moose Family Center in Alta Vista to learn more about how you can be a moose. 
Car buying is simple at Feller Chevrolet. Hi, I'm Greg Walker. You can buy online or at the store. It's quick and easy. Trade values, payment calculators, everything you need is online. We have a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on both new and used vehicles, plus a three-day money-back guarantee so you can buy with confidence. Feller's is also here after the sale. We can do warranty work on all GM vehicles, not just Chevrolet. No matter what your automotive needs, I promise we can deliver. So come see us. You'll be glad you did. Feller Chevrolet. Back to the press box for high school sports on 1055 KD Country. What a ball game here from Alta Vista. Subway post game show has arrived. It's a 60 to 54 Colonel win in double overtime. If you joined us late, you missed a lot of great stuff in the first half, the third and fourth quarters. Things really got exciting there at the end of the fourth and first overtime, second overtime. Colonels trailed at points in that second overtime. Shaheem Pinnell gave them the lead with a three-pointer there in the second overtime. They never looked back. They held on to it. Some clutch free throw shooting from a couple Colonels, specifically Ronchez Graves and Lance Bain. And they end up, I'll say, outlasting Brentsville District High School here tonight. What a game. I mean, for Brentsville, you've got to tip your cap. You've got to feel for those guys. They played their butts off, and they came up short. And as you said, a quick turnaround tomorrow. Brentsville will play Brookville in game one. That will happen at 6 p.m. here at Alta Vista High School. And then the Colonels host the Central Lunenburg Chargers afterwards. You get your money's worth here at the Jeff Coke Memorial Invitational, don't you, Bob? You do, absolutely. Uh, you get your money's worth on KD Country, too. Sorry to interrupt. You get it a lot of places. Uh, you, you know, you think you're going to c- come and see four, four, maybe eight quarters of basketball. Tonight, you got ten. Bonus. So, bonus basketball. Why pay for the whole seat when you only need the edge? <laughs> That's right. You stole the words right out of my mouth. What a game tonight. We've got a lot to discuss. Bob has got a lot of stats to tabulate. I don't envy you here tonight. 60 to 54. It was a relatively low scoring game. Brentsville led 23 20 at half. We were tied 47 all at the end of regulation and then tied at 48 at the end of. No, pardon me, that's not right. I believe we were tied 45 all at the end of regulation, if my memory serves me correctly. 48 48 after the first overtime. Yep. Yeah, so that first overtime was pretty low scoring. Three points as piece. well. <laughs> well, that math I can do. I don't need help on that math. It's the other stuff, the big stuff that I need. Colonels win by six, 60 to 54. We've had a lot of fun tonight. We're going to step aside for a moment, collect our thoughts. We'll try and somewhat recap how it all went down. It was a wild one here tonight. Both teams had some chances late in the game to win it, and then the Colonels finally did pull away in the second overtime. Subway Post Game Show is back for one final segment right after this. Colonels win in double OT, 60 to 54. You heard it live on 105.5 KD Country. English is so much more. English is more than a hardware store. English is English is, is your complete home center. Everything for every job you do. Always here for you. Get the quality you really need. That's English is so much more. Than a hardware store. Englishes. Englishes is your complete home center. On North Main Street, Alta Vista. The game is brought to you by these members of the Katy Country Sports Club. Radio Shack and Crystal Bay Pools, serving your area since 1989 for swimming pool installations, chemicals, liners, and more. El Cerrito, throw on a sombrero, shake your maracas, it's El Cerrito time. Authentic Mexican cuisine only El Cerrito can serve up. One Stop Mart, Main Street, Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken is kicking. McDonald's of Alta Vista, proud supporter of the Alta Vista Colonels. Stop by or drive through before or after the game. The Dairy Freeze, with hot dogs, burgers, fries, and of course, ice cream. They're doing it right at the Freeze on Main Street, Alta Vista. Old Dominion Insurance. See Kim and Gil, your Erie insurance agents on Main Street, Gretna, next to Tyler Flower Shop. Thanks for sponsoring tonight's broadcast on 105.5 KD Country. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. 
Well, this was a blast here doing the game with you tonight, Bobby. You're back for more tomorrow. Again, the Altavista Colonels will take on the Central Lunenburg Chargers. Subway pregame show start time for that, 7.15 or so, whenever the Brookville Bees and the Brentsville Tigers conclude their ball game. Brookville won tonight. They beat Central Lunenburg. Bees really played great in the second half tonight to get their victory. And the Colonels, I would argue, played pretty great themselves. Sloppy at times, yes, and definitely some missed opportunities by both sides to maybe put the game away in regulation. But Alta Vista ends up outlasting Brentsville in overtime, 60-34. to Brad Harner tied it up with two free throws with nine seconds left in that first overtime. Harner was incredible tonight, and he had to leave a bit early because of five fouls in the second overtime. And Brentsville with three players that fouled out. That did not help their cause. Colonels had some foul trouble of their own, but seemed like Brentsville had a bit more of it. This was a fun game. Shaheen Pinnell broke the tie, or actually gave the Colonels a lead back in the second overtime with a three-pointer from the right wing, a shot that when it went up, I think most fans and the Alta Vista coaches were saying, mm, that's not a great shot. But as soon as it rips the nylon and it goes through, everybody's saying, oh, yeah, great shot, our lead. You know, that's kind of the way basketball works. That's the way life works sometimes. Ronchez Graves hit some key free throws down the stretch for Alta Vista. Lance Bain did the same. Lawrence Galliard, the Dragon, was really good tonight on the glass, scoring, defense, did it all. This was a, a team win for the Colonels, and again, a bit sloppy, but hey, it moves them to 4-3. and three. It's their third victory of the week. They beat William Campbell on Monday, beat Appomattox Tuesday, and now they beat the 3A Brentsville Tigers on Thursday could cap off a really good week tomorrow night with a win over Central Lunenburg. Won't be easy, but I think Alta Vista's got a chance to go 4-0 this week. You waiting on me? Well, not really. I was just... You want to chat before you uh, give us the final I'm, I'm almost ready, so whatever you want to do. Bob is you almost make... ready. Let me tell you again. Subway would make a great stocking stuffer, Subway gift card. Pop into either Alta Vista location, Main Street, or inside the Walmart on Clarion Road. That Walmart location... Very easy and accessible from Route 29. That's one of the things that I absolutely love about it. Park over there on the side, Bob. You know, I, a lot of people say, oh, Walmart, it's going to be crowded. Right. You hey, park on that side there, you just dip right in. You don't have to worry about the crowd. Not one bit. I'm ready. Fire away. This is a, that, That's a Herculean effort by you to work on. I uh, think I'm a point off somewhere for Alta Vista, but we'll figure that out at a later date. Unofficial as right. always. Unofficial. Uh, for Brentsville. Max Barrett had 12. Tyler Dindall with 2. Brad Horner led everybody with 25. Mm. 5 points from Nate Kettner. 3 points from Carson Pell. 4 points from Brandon Force. And 3 points from Josiah Hogan. And they didn't take anybody home with them because the bench was exhausted in terms of bodies. They had nobody left at the end if somebody else had fouled out. For Alta Vista, unofficial, as always, like Kyle mentioned. Trey Jones, quiet 12 for him. Lance Bain had 13. Lawrence Galliard was finishes. pretty quiet. I'm sorry. Right. I, just, I was thinking out loud there. I'm sorry. Lawrence Galliard finishes with 16. Ronchez Graves and Shaheem Pinnell each with 8. And Bailey Stennett with 3. That's it. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the comment about Jones, I mean, I think back. How many times did it seem like he was waiting all alone underneath the bucket and just dropped in right. an easy two-pointer? I, I think... You hate to say he cherry-picked his 12. Yeah, well, he cashed in when right. he needed to, yeah. for sure. I, right. I think the Colonel's passing tonight is was pretty good. Uh, you know, it's hard to – I'm sure you could chart pass completions and that kind of thing. Right. It's hard to really quantify right. how good a team's passing right. is. But I think the Colonels are sharing the basketball wonderfully now. I don't think they turned it over a lot. No. Well – I mean, for a two, four, double overtime Yeah, four game, quarters and double overtime. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. think it was an egregious amount of yeah. turnovers. We were talking, by the way, earlier about longer overtime games, and uh, I texted my friend Brian Sinnott, the uh, trainer at Liberty High School, seven overtimes last year. I remember that. And they played Stan River. Yeah, that was a game where... A couple it, of those overtimes were just... There was no point look at you. Yeah. yeah. It would be whoever started the overtime with the ball would get it in the front court. And hold it. Hold it. Yep. And then wait, wait for you know ten seconds or whatever, and and that's not a terrible strategy by any means. And that's a gosh, that had to be interesting. This one tonight was interesting. We're not going to forget this anytime soon, man, Bob. We got to give players of the game now, and that's not going to be easy because there was a lot of guys tonight that uh, 
did some wonderful things. For Brentsville, I'm going to go first. I think that this one might be a tad easier. Brad Harner knocked down the free throws to tie it. He scored consistently. Great defender. I, I like Harner. I'm going to have fun watching him in game number one tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see how the Brookville Bees line up to try and stop him. Brad Harner has to be my pick for player of the game. Pretty easy, right? I'm going to go Max Barrett, <laughs> there though. There you go. Because I think defensively, he altered a lot of Colonel's shots. I think he altered a lot of Colonel's thinking just on where to go. So I'm going uh, to give Mad Max the player of the game on my side. And it seemed like Alta Vista had their best success when they were able to draw Max Barrett out. And that's why sometimes those guys were waiting underneath the basket all alone because Barrett had had to step out to take things away a bit. A good selection by you. Brentsville moves to 2-6 and six on the year. And again, they will be playing tomorrow against Brookville in game number one here at the Jeff Coke Memorial Invitational. Now it gets a little bit tougher on the other side, I think. I, I really, I'm, I'm having a hard time not picking Bailey Stinnett because of his steady presence there. But uh, I'm going to go with number four, the senior, Shaheem Pinnell. He had the miscue at the end of the first overtime where he tried the long 60-footer way too early. He shot it with about eight seconds left. Didn't let that hurt his confidence in the second overtime as he drilled the three-pointer that gave the Colonels the lead that they would not relinquish. So I'm going to give Pinnell my player of the game. Had some big baskets early in right. the game, too. It's funny. There were three guys in double digits. And we're both going with guys that so had that eight weren't points in double digits because I'm going with Ronchez Graves. Perfect. I think Ronchez yeah. is doing a great job at the point. Defensively, I like the energy he's bringing to the team. So I'm going to go Ronchez Graves. He's just a sophomore, too, by the way. Yeah, well, even better. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I like the presence he's bringing. And I think, you know, with the way basketball is going now, especially from the top down, I think emphasis is put on the point guard scoring. Ronchez knows. I mean, it's nice. Yeah, but he does not have to go out and get twenty-five. Yep. So, couple, Ron, couple key free throws yep. there. At hustle the end on too. defense. Yeah. I mean, hustle on defense. That's what I like. Honorable mention really goes to everybody. I think. Right. I mean, Galliard didn't play the first quarter and came on like a madman. Uh, yeah. You know, we mentioned Jones. I mean, we call him cashing in on easy baskets. He's still got to make them. Yep. And got to be there in the right spot and make them. You yeah. know, Lance Bain. I mean, Lance Bain at the free throw line, big. Really helps Big. secure the victory. Definitely. Great stuff tonight. See you great. tomorrow. Yeah, I, I can't wait to do it again. If this, if tomorrow night's half as good, then gosh, it's going to be a great little two-night two, two night stretch and, of course, a good week for the Colonels, too. They moved to 4-3 and three on the season. Alta Vista beats Brent, Brentsville. Ooh, hard to say after a long night. They win the ball game 60-54. For Bob Alvis, for Troy Harris, for our sound engineers back at home base, we're going to send you back to some Real country music. Happy holidays. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Subway pregame show on at 7.15 for Alta Vista and Central Lunenburg. You can hear it live on 105.5 KD Country.